Welcome, folks. What is up? What is up? Happy Thursday. It's Thursday, right? I believe so. Um, it's time for another stream. Jay, Lamb Green, welcome, welcome. Hope everyone's doing well. Let me uh, pause these jams. Uh, let's hope this works. We are going to embark on a spy hunt, I guess. I'm not entirely clear on whether we are hunting spies or we we are going to play as a spy hunting someone well or something else. Uh, Lingrin, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. Hope you enjoy the stream. Um, are we a spy that's being hunted? Are we hunting spies? Are we a spy that's hunting? I'm not sure if this is ever elaborated upon, but there'll be plenty of espionage and hunting, I'm sure. Got the game right here. Picked this up uh, relatively recently. I think this is one of the games I grabbed early this year, in like the either relatively late last year or early this year. I think in in uh, like the most recent batch of Japanese games I grabbed, and um, I bought this game under the mistaken understanding that this was the Spy Hunter game that was released. Uh, planned to be like released as part of a movie deal uh, or I mean the game was released but the movie was never made um, however uh, because he was supposed to be starring in the movie The Rock is also starring in the game Operation complete. that's not this game Caution. I was ignorant to the fact there are in fact three separate Spy Hunter games on PS2 and this is the first of those three, and the only one of these three that actually is supposed to be any good, basically. <laughs> um, this came out in uh, 2001, and the sequel, Spy Hunter 2, came out in 03, I think. Uh, and the game that features The Rock is called Spy Hunter Nowhere to Run, and it came out in 2006. Uh, I have since procured xbox versions of the other two games and i'm actually very interested to check those out at the very least the one with the rock that was a franken and uh, i had initially kind of thought you know my my idea was kind of to do this sort of double bill of sorts with uh wheel man that we just played through over the weekend and uh the rock spy hunter game that kind of fell through when i realized that that's not the game i had <laughs> Uh, but I was kind of excited all over again when I did a little bit of research and, uh, learned that this game is actually supposed to be good. <laughs> so that made me interested in playing this game. And it made me interested actually in checking out all three of these games, um, to see what they're like. All three were made by different developers. So I'm sure they're all relatively different, in, you know, in some ways. Uh, the, like, marketing for the, the third game with The Rock, like, brags about... How now there's on-foot sections, which, like, for me, sounds, uh, terrible. Uh, I don't know what Load this oh, yeah, I don't need to load. Circle. There we go. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I guess, like I said, when I bought this, I just saw Spy Hunter PS2 and, and made that assumption that it was that game, not realizing that there were three different ones. So I, I, now I kind of want to play all three of them. They all seem kind of different in some way or another. This game had a Metacritic score of like 84 or something, and the other two games have Metacritic scores in like the low 50s. <laughs> you know, I'm certainly not one to let something like that affect whether I'm interested in checking a game out or not. Um, but seeing as this game was actually received well, uh, I figure it's probably pretty good. Um, and um, we already, I guess, have like people in chat who have fond memories of this game, so that's promising. Whoops. Let's see if I can enter my name correctly. There we go. This was unfortunately, well, I mean, to whatever extent anyone cares, but uh, this was the only game uh, to be released in Japan in this series. I guess, um, well, I mean, of these, uh, the PS2 games. 
I was looking a little bit at the manual right here. Uh, I was just flipping through this real quick as I was booting it up. It has some uh, nice ads on the back for Red Rumble 2 and Gauntlet Dark Legacy. And I was kind of curious because I hadn't really thought about it, I guess. Uh, there's also this like questionnaire card. Um, but this was actually published by Midway. Midway Games in Japan. I always associate like Midway releases, Midway ports and stuff, uh, published by Acclaim Japan. But that makes sense because I'm mostly thinking of uh, I'm mostly thinking of uh, older games that Midway didn't publish themselves in the West either. Uh, Midway didn't get started publishing console games until Mortal Kombat 3 on the PS1. Uh, so anything pre previous to that, and even at the time, uh, actually I'm not sure. If, I don't think Midway actually published MK3, but they were involved in developing it which is kind of when they got started developing console games. And once they got into console development, they would port or publish them themselves, I suppose. Uh, but still well into the mid-90s, uh, late 90s even, uh, a lot of the arcade ports were still published by Acclaim and other companies. Am I playing the Japanese version for any particular reason? Well, it's the one I own, <laughs> uh, primarily. I have a Japanese PS2 and I collect Japanese games. Um, so there's nothing more specific about playing this specific game than anything else. Um, I just mostly collect Japanese games. Um, let's get started, I guess. Uh, although I do, you know, I'm always curious about checking out Japanese localizations of Western games. I, I find that interesting. So are we... Do I back out or do I have... No, okay. There we go. That was weird. Uh, but... Yeah, so it's interesting because I've not really... This is probably the first time I'm playing a, a, a Japanese game, like, release of a Midway... Or... Re let me rephrase. I think this is the first time I'm playing a game published by Midway Japan. And presumably, uh, they would have been in charge of the localization. Uh, because... I'm noticing right off the bat that this seems to be a pretty dodgy localization. Now, Acclaim was not exactly well known for having a great track record of uh, Japanese localization of Midway ports and, and other games. More often than not, the Japanese releases of stuff like Mortal Kombat, the few versions that did come out, and um, I don't know, I've got like uh, WrestleMania, the arcade game for Saturn, and stuff like that. They were usually all in English, with no translation whatsoever in the games but with a translated manual. Uh, I'm just looking at sound options, vibration, all right. Control settings, player one. I actually skimmed through the manual. I think we'll uh, get the hang of this. But yeah, the reason why I'm saying that this already seems like a dodgy localization is basically two things. One, the text font used for like everything is is like super ultra bland generic standard system font. You can even tell uh, it's a standard up top, like standard reverse flip. Like the text doesn't even really fit in the text boxes, um, which looks a little funky. Extras, music, movie player, yeah, kakush kodo pyo. Like, and that's the other thing. The terminology used. Here in the menus is like super whack. Um, there's far too much actual Japanese words, like, and it's it's really weird. Um, like this is what nimyo, uh, I guess, like mission. It's just two player, like two player mode would never be called two player in a Japanese menu. And then like mission details or whatever I guess oh, oh, statistics I see okay and yeah, you can see like the text on the very top left <laughs> it's like the text is like overlapping itself it doesn't fit like the yeah the text is just not done very well so it's uh, I don't know I, again I find that fascinating like I'm, I'm interested in localization so it's always curious to see how it's handled because there's definitely some companies who have a track record of really stellar uh, Japanese localizations of Western games, but it doesn't look like Midway's part of them. Oh, what's up, Trap? And uh, you, you'd be surprised how often you still see that when games 
with games that try to do like Japanese localization. Uh, I'm reminded seeing this, maybe I haven't got midway on my brain, which to be fair, I usually do. Um, but Injustice, the first Injustice game was actually released in Japan. And uh, the localization was like awful because they translated everything. So, and it, it still had like this font, basically. It looked like really shitty and like every single thing, every part of the UI, every single, like all the terminology that was used in the game had like, was like in Japanese instead of in English. So it would be like really confusing even to, to a Japanese player. Not the character names, but like, um, he wouldn't say like Batman wins when you win a match. You would say like Batman no Shori, which is like, yeah, it sort of translates, but like that style of announcing the winner in English is like from Japanese games in the first place. Like having game over on the screen or whatever, like all that, all the super ingrained like video game language that is like understood globally is like from Japan, even when it's in English. So when you like trans awkwardly machine translate that in a very literal sense into Japanese, like it's so weird. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's like pretty shit. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Uh, let, let's uh, see what this is about. Okay. All right, so we got a bunch of missions, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Test track license. That's spy hunter. All right, so. I like that the text is pretty readable, at least. It's a nice change of pace from weird kanji fonts on, like, Mega Drive and shit. Alright, we got eight, eight minutes. Oh, boy. But, yeah, even this, like, even just skimming this, not even trying to read it, and admittedly, there's a lot of kanji here that I can't really read very well. It just looks... I don't know. Not, not awful. That's not super unnatural, necessarily. And I would say, of course, you know, the whole spy stuff, like... You wouldn't necessarily expect super simplified, kid-friendly language. But even so, it looks... I don't know. It's pretty standard, though, I suppose. So I guess we got primary and secondary objectives, which... I don't know how you would translate that in English, but... It's like, objective number one. And then, like, objective... Objectives number two. That doesn't strike me as, like, a correct way to translate that, but... I really wouldn't know. Uh, but we gotta destroy all targets. There's nine of them, I guess. Uh, slalom gate. All right, so finish the slalom gates. Um, break through something, maybe. I don't know. Activate all satcoms. Something with the GPS point track. Follow something. I don't know. Turbo jump with the Kujumito Kreasio. Alright, clear 50 meters with the turbo jump. And uh, prevent casualties, maybe, I guess? Yeah, this game was apparently a, a big success. Like I said, it reviewed very well. And, I mean, clearly it did well enough for them to do a direct sequel, as well as the second kind of reboot or whatever. They released three Spy 100 games within five years, which was surprising to me when I, when I learned about it. Um, Wait, I clear the level by clearing the main objective, but I proceed to the next level by clearing the secondary objectives. So what's the distinction? <laughs> Matsunaga, what's up? All right, that's the slalom gates. Uh, all right, destroy all these things. I think. Wait, do I? Or no, I avoid the cars to destroy the targets. Collect the satcom balls. I'm not sure what it's actually asking me to do with the GPS things, but maybe it'll become clear as we go here. Press circle to continue. Yeah, like circle or like maru to continue shimasu. That like it's a very like verbose way. Like I think that's maybe the weirdest part. Um, there's like um, the sentence structure for the instructions is like 
it makes grammatical sense in Japanese, but it's it's how you would write it in English. It's not how you would write it in Japanese. It's like you can tell that the text is like press circle to continue, but continue is like also a really weird uh, use of the word uh, in Japanese here. So it's, it's yeah, it's strange. Were there any between two and this, or did two kill the series? Um, no. Spy Hunter 2 came out two years after this. And then three years after Spy Hunter 2, there was um, Spy Hunter Nowhere to Run, starring The Rock. And I think right around that time, there was a mobile Spy Hunter game. There's been like two or three mobile Spy Hunter games between like 2005 and 2012. And there was a 3DS Spy Hunter in 2012, I think. So, I mean, the series was like more alive after this than before this, for the nearest like decade. Oh, the original Spy Hunter 2? Um, I think there was, there was Super Spy Hunter, which I think was around that, like I think that was a console game. I don't know this series super duper well, but I did do a little bit of research before this. Uh, I don't have it all like committed to memory. But I think there was there was Spy Hunter, Spy Hunter 2, and then I think there was a Super Spy Hunter. Uh, and then yeah, I think there was mostly like uh, ports and collections kind of stuff uh, until this came out. But I mean, there's not a lot of 80s arcade series that had like a steady stream of releases throughout the 90s. Oh, Super Spy Hunter is battle formula. Right, right, right. That uh, that does ring a bell. Uh, I turn soldier. Happy Thursday. What's up? We're gonna play some Spy Hunter here and hope I understand how this works. All right, we got our analog controls activated. All right. Begin operation. So this game is old enough that you actually accelerate with the face button. We already have some PS2 motion blur. All right, let's see how this goes. So fair warning. I'm absolute shit at driving. So we'll see if I have any success whatsoever with this game. Man, I should have known there's going to be excessive PS2 blur, because this is a fucking 2001 game after all. Doing okay so far, I think. Pretty cool. Whoa. <laughs> I guess we have like eight minutes to clear the course. So unless the course is really long, I can actually kind of take this pretty slow and steady, probably. Wait, what was I supposed to do there? Oh, I wasn't supposed to shoot it, probably. Right, okay, so dodge those and shoot the targets. Whoa. Okay. Also, I can definitely not read chat while doing this. <laughs> Alright, we might have to redo this if we need all the secondary objectives. But that's fine. Alright, there's a break. Shooting feels pretty alright. Oh, you see like the little... Force on? Objective complete. Maybe? I don't know. Okay, she actually does call it first objective and not secondary objective. Should I have turbo there? I think it's like double tap, accelerate turbo. No, okay, we're just uh, transforming, right. There is a so-called turbo jump. Uh, I didn't just like study the manual to go over all of the HUD information. So I'm not sure if any of those icons up there are indicating. All right, that worked. <laughs> Uh, any, like, limited resources as far as turbo goes? I'm a little scared to try it right now, but maybe we'll check it out. Feels pretty alright, though. It doesn't look half bad, either. Okay. Yep, okay, that's the turbo. Got it. And it's, like, building up. Oh, that's the boat. <laughs> oh. Shit. Oh, I got it. Nice beeping stock sounds. Alright, there's one sat tom left. I can saw it over here. 
pretty cool, nice little tutorial level. Not something to necessarily take completely for granted for a 2001 game. Wait, what's this all now? Yellow? Alright, okay. What am I supposed to do? Oh, wait. Probably not supposed to do that. Okay, right. So why were they... Why were they yellow is the question. Oh, you can't actually... Oh, out of turbo. Nice. Should have saved it for that jump. Alright, we're, uh... We're a motorcycle. Sick. Motorcycles are cooler than cars, so it's fine by me. Weapons van. Weapons van? Does that mean I reload here or whoop, oh, nope, we're just done, I guess. Nope, we okay. I wasn't sure if weapons meant I was reloading or I need to destroy it or what, but it looks like uh, more of the former. Four minutes left here. Full on night rider. Well Okay. I was like, what happened? It's just I do believe Spy Hunter predates Knight Rider, but I I know it came out in '83. I'm not sure when when Knight Rider premiered, but I would Area let's cleared. say it's after that. Uh, let me catch up with chat. No triggers. Well, I mean, you could still accelerate with the shoulder buttons. Uh, it's more about like keeping uh, buttons like active. I mean, I mean, they're they are uh, analog. The the triggers are or the shoulder buttons, whatever you want to call them, uh, they are analog on the PS2. I mean, it's the analog functionality is a little awkward. And to be fair, the face buttons are analog too, I guess. <clears throat> September '82. Well, there you go. The Road Fighter must have been at, that was the after this probably, right? That was that's a Konami game, I think. I want to say that's like. Um, 84, something like that. Maybe later still. I'm trying to think of what other what other kind of games like this. Uh, clearly, this game is certainly after Night <laughs> Uh I think the bikes when they aren't low on HP, that would kind of make sense, I guess. Loaded. I mean, I think Loaded 2 is like the uh, maybe the the weirdest, the least weird. Japanese here. Uh, actually, I think a lot of uh, a lot of games will have would have it say um, uh, like Yomikomi 2 or something like that, like re disc reading or whatever. So I, it doesn't that in particular doesn't really stand out to me. Let's let's see if we can interpret this. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, so the GP... Okay, something about the boats that are marked with GPS. Tramp, your Japanese is better than mine. Maybe you can help me make sense of this. I'm not sure what I was meant to do with those boats, because I shot one of them, and I failed. <laughs> uh, the jump is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, what was the other one I failed? Something about civil... I think it's probably because I crashed right through another boat. Uh, so I just, like... Destroyed a non-target. Well, we got an upgrade. We got a um, some kind of missile. Restart or continue? Okay. Yeah, continue is like <laughs> you would use that term continue in Japanese, but very specifically to like continue after a game over. It doesn't mean like proceed. Japanese worse than mine. Okay. Well. We'll try our best to get through this together. All right, let's save. I'm not entirely clear on the the uh, progression. Like like I said, it seemed to it say that you clear the stage by clearing the main objective, but you clear the secondary to proceed, <laughs> like to gain access to the next level. So I don't know. We'll we'll play and we'll restart if we have to. I guess. Good evening, gentlemen. You have been summoned here today to execute the final stage of Operation Rebirth. So without further delay, it's time to start our new world. 
All stations are now fully operational. Petra, Venice, French Riviera, Germany, England, United States, and Panama. After each base has completed its operations, we will then meet in Petra, where you shall all witness the launch of the Four Horsemen. Upon my command, a strategically placed satellite shall emit an electromagnetic pulse that will spread like a much-needed cure across the globe, leaving the Earth cleansed, completely drained of power. Neither the deepest canyons nor the highest mountains shall be spared. Unfortunately, there is one precaution we must take. Our insiders tell us that IES is aware of our presence and has sent a spy to stop us. Normally I wouldn't worry about a single spy, but I have reason to believe that this is the very man who crippled our endeavors in 83 and postponed our plans. <laughs> this will not happen again. We will use our army of agents to eliminate him. Ignorant government agencies don't know who they are dealing with. They will soon understand that this will happen. It has been foretold. It is for the good of all humanity. That is all, gentlemen. <laughs> that hair, though. When the four horsemen ride, darkness will blanket the earth, and a new king will rise from the ashes. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm pretty... Pretty nice CG, though. For 2001, it's not bad. I mean, it's not, like, cutting edge, but... I like the facial animation for the, the lip-syncing and stuff uh, was pretty nicely done. I mean, the voice acting for 2001... Midway standards, you know. That's its charm, for sure. Um, I love that they actually tie it back to, like, the original Spy Hunter... Uh, with the story. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, interesting. I think it says um, on the top left there, um, the number four, I take it to represent the number of cleared objectives. Oh, okay, okay. And now I get it. Okay, so the Axis number, that's like Super Mario 64 stars or whatever. We need seven completed objectives for Mission 3. So depending on how many, it's not like you need to do all of them, but you need to collect or clear enough secondary objectives to like the primary objective just has to be completed but depending on how many secondary objectives you clear uh, you may gain more or less access I guess to future stages that's that's a cool system um, anyway yeah IAS I guess is what did it say international espionage spies I don't know something we're the good guys, I guess, and uh, Nostra International are the... They're the villain syndicate, whatever it is. Um, Nostra ga shinjata helicopter codename Dragonfly. Shiken shikouchu de aru. Alright, so Nostra are doing a test flight with their new helicopter codename Dragonfly. So we're going to destroy it. And um, meet up with the IES truck in Frankfurt, I guess. So, uh, yeah, let's destroy some choppers. That's our primary objective. Okay, so secondary objectives. Um, destroy trucks. Delivery trucks or something. Five of them, okay. Uh, collect the SATCOM balls. And... Minimize civilian casualties. I guess that's probably going to be a thing for every mission. I wonder if all of the missions are going to have... Uh... Oh, shit. I didn't realize this was the thing. Oh, oh, yeah. I can see up top. Now I get it. I didn't even look at this in the previous mission. Okay. I wonder if uh, the tutorial mission had, like, extra many objectives. Uh, and the rest of them are going to be a little fewer here. So we actually have to be a little bit careful to clear all of them. But we'll see. Weapons. 9mm... Um, missiles, oil. I think this is a defensive. There's like offensive and defensive weapons. Switch. Oh, okay. We just see what this looks like. Switch to different modes, I guess. <laughs> Enemies. Road Lord. Okay. Just. Um, oh, is this the? This is like the boss, I guess. This is the. No wait, That would be the helicopter, right? Maybe these. Yeah. This is just the truck. 
Who the fuck knows? Wait, um... Uh, oh, okay, we can still flip through them on the square button here. Switchblade. It's got a diamond drill. Bullseye. Okay. And Road Lord. Road British. It's an American car. Uh, it's a video game car. It's pretty sick. Alright, start. Find a way to collect all the SATCOMs something? Is it maybe not super straightforward? We'll, we'll see. I mean, we'd clearly go back to the first mission to, you know, do those objectives. I wonder if they, like, stack, so to speak. Like, if I do the first mission... Are the objectives I've cleared going to stay cleared? Or do I need to clear all of them in a single run? Curious. L2 and R2... Like, L L1 and L2 switches weapons, offense and defense. And um, R1 and R2 fire. R1 for offensive weapon and R2 for defense weapon. Alright, those are the trucks that we're going to destroy. Got it. Okay, looks like we're going to find a jump somewhere... All right, press circle to continue. That's kind of cool. We're just like, some garage. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay, I guess that's what, how we do that. All right, this is pretty cool. Oh shit, enemy dudes. I mean, we got big old guns. I guess it makes sense that we get to use them. The tutorial did not prepare me for this, is all. Pretty sick, though. Oh, let's try this, dude. I'm into this. This is pretty cool. I like that the reticle show up real early. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought that would be like the end of level boss or something. Exploring a little bit. Four trucks remaining. I guess I just expected the level layouts to be like a little more linear, like in the original. Maybe there's a little bit to explore or like, who knows. Man, this is pretty nice looking. Oh shit, it's the switchblade. What? Oh, shit. Oh, let's go this way. Sorry, buddy. Rear view cam. That's pretty cool. It just popped up. That's probably an enemy. They're a little hard to distinguish. Put some oil down there. Gonna, oh yeah, there's the sad calm thing. I should have taken a different route. It's pretty cool though. I don't mind that it's like, I guess the levels are gonna be pretty short and you're meant to kind of replay them maybe to, to like find hidden stuff and shit. I guess I approached it too fast. Oh shit, I guess I have a life bar. It's probably refilled now though. Is that probably the car thing on the top left? Right. That guy was not a civilian. Like the trees, it's all like pretty simple stuff, but it looks nice. I don't trust these guys, but I didn't get any instructions about any motorcyclists. Okay, they're, they're fucking opening fire. Frame rates. Maybe not perfect, but oh, they got a dual jump there. I see. Shit. Is that a civilian truck? For fuck's sake. He's pretty aggressive. Oh, it says Nostra. That's not civilian. 
evil truck. I can't see shit. All right, maybe I destroyed it. Pour some oil. I guess I'm going to clear the main objective at least. I'm not sure about anything else. I didn't destroy a civilian car, so I think we're possibly good on that front. Whoops. Can I, can I, can I reverse? Uh, I guess not. Physics! Oh, I hold... Wait, what the... Okay, I hold down and accelerate to reverse. Alright, Oktoberfest, of course, because we're in Germany. Makes sense. It's like one of the two things Americans know about Germany, I guess, so... They, they would put that in the game, wouldn't they? Hot dog car. Sick. I'm trying to remember the controls here. Oop. I don't know if collecting one of these things is going to do me any good, but I might as well. Sick, we got like two FPS subway car. That's pretty satisfying jumping. Oh. Got him! Definitely. You take a bit of damage. Okay. I don't think we got all the trucks, did we? Am I meant to like. I mean, I got a minute and a half. Never mind. I thought I could maybe explore that way. No such luck. Well, let's just pull up and um, see how it went. Jersey Sword, what's up? Yeah, I like the visuals of this game. I mean, uh, the frame rate's not par perfect, but uh, it has some charm to it. And yeah, the <laughs> the garage doors. I guess I'm driving very carefully. Not gonna bust through Area shit. Cleared. Oh, wow, okay. I got more objectives than I thought I did. Yeah, I missed, like, most of the SATCOM things. But I actually did get all trucks. Or at least the five I needed. I'm not sure if that was technically all of them, but... Hmm. Jinknator. Happy Thursday. Remember playing this? It was pretty sick. Hella just drive around. Yeah, definitely, uh... The levels seem kind of open-ended, or at least like they've got branching paths. Uh, maybe we'll get a better feel for how we're kind of expected to tackle them. So this would be a good example, you know. Clearly, I didn't take the correct route to find all the SATCOM balls. I there was at least one that I just like missed. It was on like right next to me, but I think there was also at least one that I could not have collected with the route I took. So I wonder if you're meant to take all, like, do multiple playthroughs and take different routes to complete different objectives, or if you're supposed to take a specific route to be able to do all of the objectives. Like, I guess it's a little weird if it's meant to be a sort of trial and error and you have to, you know, figure out the correct route. Because it doesn't really seem like you're meant to kind of backtrack. I'm not really sure. Like I said, maybe by just playing through more missions we'll, we'll get a more natural fe feel for it. And or, you know, we might find ourselves in a situation where we actually have to redo missions to, conduct, to get enough points. Um, so we'll figure it out. Um, and yeah, the driving, I mean, <laughs> I don't think I'm a very good judge of the quality of the driving, like from a simulation perspective. But as someone who can't drive in real life or in video games, if a driving game enables me to like have fun and make it feel good then that's all i can ask for as a street racing vibe how the routing seems to go for the objectives yeah it's, it's a little different than i expected but i'm uh, at the same time like this is exactly like in 2001 you could make a game like this without it being too weirdly niche um as i mentioned the the one with the rock from 2006, um, it has like the, the tag, or like, not the tagline, but like the text on the back of the box or like the marketing blurb that you see when you look the game up on like game FAQs or movie games or whatever. It's like, the Spy Hunter series goes where it's never gone before, on foot. Like it's super excitedly bragging about having what I'm sure are terrible on foot segments, which is like, yeah, of course you would have to have that what are you going to make a game about just being in a car? 
are you from the 80s or something? Like, you kind of get that vibe that, like, in 2006, you had to have that kind of shit in it. Um, and it has to have, like, you know, an open world aspect to it or whatever it might be. Like, this game feels, like, nicely small in scope and contained and focused on a particular experience that feels really quaint, but I really like it. Um, and it's kind of the last era where you saw that thing. Like, there's some stragglers kind of in the PS3 360 era, but look, you know, that would be kind of a, a full price retail game that is still like very kind of narrow in what, in what it's trying to do and, and focusing on that. But I think that kind of game in, in general was definitely, by that point, would have been seen as archaic. Um, or, you know, just a, you know, there's so many PS2 games that are like, you know, three hours long or something. And that's the same thing. Like, you, you didn't really, you kind of stopped seeing that at some point in the mid 2000s. So it's really, I think it's really nice to just kind of go back to, to that kind of feel. Anyway, we destroyed the helicopter. That was pretty un, uneventful, really. So, okay, we actually need four more um, objectives in order to reach mission four. So, unless we do this one, like, perfectly, that seems unlikely to happen. Which I don't mind. It, it'll give us... Uh, oh, okay. Whoops, I guess there's 14 missions. <laughs> uh, it'll give us an opportunity to go back and learn more about how some of these objectives work. <laughs> Good games? No, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I like this kind of smaller scope and more narrow focus, but... Um, my, my complaint isn't that that was good and what we have now is bad. It's just that we had this and we don't anymore, and I miss that, you know. I mean, it, it, these types of games exist, but not within, you know, within the mainstream, I guess you could say. Anyway. Uh, uh, going to Venice, I guess. Uh, let's, see we can, let's just look at the objectives. Okay, yeah, destroy trucks. <laughs> got it. Um, oh shit, we got one of those boat things. So we shot those boats and it, like, failed us. I don't think we're supposed to, like, crash into them either. Or we're supposed to, like... Oh, dude, hang on. There's a button for this, I think. I think I'm supposed to, like, scan them or something. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circle button is for GPS scan something or other. All right, so I'm supposed to press circle on them. All right. Wait, hang on. Let's look at the controls again. Maybe it's something I... You can press up to lock on and down for back. Reverse, I guess. Hmm. Wow, there's a... There's a control scheme where you accelerate by pressing down. Oh yeah, I guess it's never mind. Okay, it's just flipping the D-pad and face buttons. It sort of makes sense in that regard, but wow, that's still weird. Alright, okay. Press circle on the boats. We're still not gonna get all four, because I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get all of the SATCOMs, but. Yeah, attach GPS device. Yeah, because I forgot that that was a thing. Uh That's why I couldn't... Like, I forgot that that was a verb, basically. I figured all you can do is drive and shoot. So it's like, what am I supposed to do that's driving or shooting when neither seem to work? <coughs> but yeah, it's the GPS um, like tracker, basically. Venice, 6 a.m. P.m., maybe. Looks more like P.m., I guess. Yeah, the SATCOM stuff is... Um, Definitely seems to be the trickiest style of uh, objective. System check complete. All right. Oh yeah. Shit. Dude, this is pretty nice looking. I love the the skybox. These are enemies, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty good. Can we trust? Well, I guess anything that's red is like probably an enemy.
Maybe closer, uh, following it a little too closely there. What? Oh, wrong thing. Got him. Okay, cool. Dude, it's a little hard to see. Oh, shit. Wrong button. Back up. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. Well, he's an enemy, so we're fine. That's pretty cool. You can just, like, drive up on the side here. Aha, I see you. Oh, shit, we need a fucking turbo boost to get that. Oh. Oh boy, we're taking damage. I'm not sure how to avoid taking damage, actually. Uh, we might have to redo this mission for, for other reasons. Okay, we didn't destroy it at least. Serious. No, I'm trying to back. There's no backing up. Oh, wait, what? Nice. Okay, that worked. I'm holding left. Why is turning left? Turn oh, I guess I'm back. Oh, boy. We're okay. We're okay. No defensive weapon in the water, I guess. That sort of makes sense. Alright, we've got the GPS. Dude, how the... Ooh, I see. Breaking on water is a little weird. I was like, how the heck do you get up there? Wrong way. I know. I know. Oh. Come on. I did not inflict that. Uh, there we go. Shit. I turbo boosted too late. All right. Well, getting fucking rear-ended by hostile civilians. All right. We got a health refill now, I think. Yeah. Like, everything is just, like, three pixels on the horizon, and you move pretty fast. So, it's kind of rough. Like, it's pretty difficult to just avoid taking damage in general, I feel. Luckily, collateral damage is not a whoa concern. But catacombs? Sure, why not? on. Hit a fucking barrel. There we go. Ooh. Pretty good sound effects. Uh, we're done with the trucks. Definitely didn't get all the satcoms. Uh, Civilian casualties remains to be seen, I guess. And the GPS. And this thing. Got it. Nice. Yeah, this is good. Green flare signals. Finish line. I like these little CG ending movies. They're like whatever. They're five seconds long. But I appreciate that they're there. Adds a little production value to the whole thing. <clears throat> International espionage Area section. Yeah. We well, honestly kind of did better than I expected, especially with how much I fucked around at the beginning. I guess you can you were allowed to kill like one boat. <laughs> Still not sure how the like, upgrade system works. So yeah, like there's definitely one or two Santcom things that I saw that I just like turbo boosted at the wrong time so I didn't collect them and I did collect one did I just barely miss the fourth one or did we like not see it at all this level didn't necessarily seem to have as much in terms of part branching paths but there was that part with the truck that I shot it from the water but clearly I could have driven up there so I don't know 
Uh, regardless, we are, in fact, uh, short one uh, objective point here. So we're going to have to replay something. But I think in the both in the interest of um, gaining the, the easiest like objective points, uh, but also because I could use the practice, uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, tutorial level. Because, yeah, we, we've missed a few years. So... The jump, as long as I... Yeah, I'm just not going to use turbo until I see that jump, which I think I should be able to recognize. Yeah, I, I saw it coming on the previous attempt. My gauge was just empty. So that we should be able to clear, assuming that it's not actually difficult if you have turbo. Uh, the GPS one, I think we should do just fine. Um, it's that second one, if anyone's Japanese, is better than mine. But I'm not really clear on what it's meant to be. Uh, but we'll... We should at least get one or two more objectives. Oh yeah, it says there, R1 to shoot, circle to shoot the GPS thing. This game... Um, it is not from a time period where... You would uh, have a button prompt at the end of a loading time, load screen, like a prompt to continue. <laughs> It'll just skip you right past it. Oh, okay. Dodge the cones. Right. It does explain it right here. I did crash fucking into a cone because I didn't. It didn't seem like I could avoid it. Begin operation. So, oh, okay, yeah, let's change angle, right? Yeah, let's do a little. Oh, fuck, actually. I was going to say, do a zoomed out view, but that means the horizon is like further away. <laughs> so it's like harder to see shit. So people stick with this view. Oh shit, I almost immediately failed. But yeah, like the driving feels good. I like it. Good spy music. Yeah, okay. All right. It's not there, but... Wait. No, never mind. I saw something... Or I thought I saw something, but... Time... We finished with, like, four minutes remaining last time, so... We're in absolutely no hurry. It's quality XCOM stock sound effects for driving through the gates. I do like the fact that it's, like an actual training course so it's like yeah so this part's right oh i drive up here of course why didn't it occur to me i was like hey how do i even avoid this but yeah you just fucking drive up the side uh that there's these like cardboard fake cars and shit any civilian population uh i like that and it's like yeah it doesn't like some things are going to be a little different once you're an actual real mission but it's cool. I like the style of it. It's pretty funny to imagine, too, that this fucking agency or whatever is, like, training their car agents. Shit. I just fucked up that car. Oh, I'm right on the track! Oh, there's several tracks. Oh, the bullets are pretty slow. I like shoot it, it's like a full second before it actually breaks. Alright, we've got all the targets. Now time for some uh, GPS boating action. Yeah, and I guess it's only for this little intro training mission. We'll get this fanciful slow-mo camera shot. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Be a little careful here. Here, all right. Didn't even have to do any of these backwards like last time. Second objective complete. Nice. GPS time. 
I think. Ah, no, wait, we gotta do some jumps first. We don't need to waste the turbo boost on this. Or delicious stock sound effects. <laughs> oh, shit. Controls pretty well, though. Nice, so this is the last one, I think. Nice. So now we do some GPS, yep. Oh, alright, okay. Got it at the wrong thing. It is kind of weird when the reticle shows up so early. I mean, it's better that than too late, but it's a little weird. Dude, did it fucking escape? There's like a limited time to do it, or does it circle around? Uh, let's back up a little bit. We have plenty of time. Do they, like, run on a circular track? I noticed, like, a little bit too late that it just, like, disappeared into the fucking cave wall. Now, it looks like uh, we're all out of boats here. Shit. Well, I guess I didn't have all the time in the world then. Well, at least we should clear two more objectives. Objective complete. Initializing vehicle transition. I was about to say, hey, maybe I should fail a mission that I Approaching weapons didn't fail last time, just to see how it handles it. And then I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't fail the the cones. But I remembered also that I didn't actually complete the cone one, so I definitely shouldn't deliberately fail it. Uh, but I think this is, yeah, this is just leading up to the exit. Or the exit, the finish line, the goal, I don't know. But yeah, I could definitely see this game becoming really quite difficult. <laughs> Area cleared. Yeah. Ah, this is annoying. But hey. We can at least get to the next level. And I guess we have one more. Um oh, <laughs> I don't need to watch this again. Um we got like one extra, so to speak. Uh, so I think we can afford to at least fail one objective and still get to the next stage. Uh, but it remains to be seen. Swamp Venom. Yeah, so we only need two objectives to access this. But from here on out, we need to actually do four per, and then five. Yeah, it gets more and more demanding, I guess. Well, well maybe not really. It's changes in between each one, I guess. Swamp Venom. Control Tower. Uh, destroy Control Tower. Seven of them. Okay, we got SATCOM balls. Uh, track the GPS whatever signal on some trucks. Okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mad Bomber. Mortar thing. Sure. Bullseye. Can I, like, oh, no, wait. I was like, oh, I can't switch. No, I just changed the whatever. So I'm not sure how this upgrade thing is meant to work, but whatever. I guess our weapons are better, probably. I do appreciate that at the start you get this little camera pan. Oh, wait, okay. You can lock on missiles with L3. Wait, what's the lock on thing on the up on the D-pad, then? What's that all about? The manual says, yeah, press up, lock on. But maybe it only works with a particular weapon or something. Who knows? Not the most excited color palette here, but it pulls it off nicely. For being a somewhat drab, like, realistic look, uh, it's still got some uh, flair to it. It's 
up, Electro? Good evening. I totally skipped over that intro thing, but whatever. System check complete. We're just parking two meters from. Oh shit! Well, I didn't mean to turbo boost, but I guess we're in enemy territory. So wait, never mind. I was gonna say, no need to worry about civilians, but that was still an objective to not. Wait, that's an evil truck. Got an evil logo on it. Well, whatever. I guess we'll just drive past it. So we can turn left here. Oh shit! Oh, there's a one of those. Yeah, we got one. Nice. Are these the things I'm meant to destroy? By the way, I did not pay any amount of attention. much. I'm trying to... Okay. Yeah, alright. Yeah, we do turn into a bike and taking damage. That makes sense. Shit! Shooting me in the back. Whoa. Oh my god. Okay. I guess we gotta, like, just fucking dodge shit. Dude, how do I get that? Alright. Oh, I'm gonna... You take the other route. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, I don't have any turbo left. Mission failure. Interceptor destroyed. All right, restart. That's fine. Yeah, dude, Spy Hunter was uh, it was real hot there. But I was surprised at how many Spy Hunter games there have been. Uh, even after the PS2 ones, there's been like a couple of mobile ones, and there's even one on 3DS. Surprise to learn. This game definitely seems pretty cool. Actually, I guess if uh, those towers had been the objective, they would have uh, had a target of some sort. Wait, so there was definitely a SATCOM ball on the left route. There's going to be one here too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the one I... Wait, hang on. Whoa. Perfectly. I fucking switched routes. Perfectly make it so that I did. I missed both of them. So let's not miss both. And now I'm back. Okay. So maybe there was a second uh, branching path here. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Huh. Whoa. Physics. Yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage. It's not easy to avoid taking damage in this game. Right, so these are definitely not, like, usually exclusive. Oh, wow, I very almost shot here. Alright, that's the lock on. Works at least. And yeah, I, I do have um, the other games on Xbox, so I'm curious to check them out. Uh, at the very least, the Rock one. Oh, it's also the green over here. Time at least seems generous. It's not like fucking uh, Batman on Mega CD, where it's like absurdly tight. Whoa. I tried to switch weapons. Oh. So I assume I can lock on with this to, like, maybe shoot a little more. Oh, it is locked on, I see. There we go. Six of them left, though. Maybe they're all, like, in rapid succession right here. Yeah, kind of okay. Pretty satisfying. Oh, yeah, it's the fucking mad... Bomber, or whatever it was called. Oop! Oh. Oh. 
squeeze through. Nice. This is pretty awesome, <laughs> honestly. I wish it ran a little bit better, you know, but... Oh, uh, that doesn't look good. Whoa. Whoa. Shit. I'm fucking dead. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's, uh... It's a midway game, alright. Like, it's... It's not super fair. <laughs> uh, that's the thing, though. It's like, it doesn't... The, the feedback on getting hit isn't great. But I guess you learned that on this level, like, you can be pretty reckless with shooting. I guess I can use the missiles more, too, because I... Uh, I'll get the refill before I actually really need them. Okay. Shit, though. Probably didn't need the turbo there, but that's fine. Right, I can lock onto those guys. Try to lock on all wrong for this is around. Right, 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 right. Because I can't hit these fucking things though. I'm like shooting above them. Yeah, okay, so that's how we take care of those guys at least. I was in bike form last time I got to the truck, so we're doing better. The lock-on is really effective, because you can like, lock on to shit that you can't even see, which is convenient, but kind of like, it means you should be locking on weirdly early, weirdly often, like these enemies and shit. Alright, gotta be a little careful. Oh, never mind. We're completed with that shit, so... Save on this though. Oh. Alright, we have pretty decent health. How do I get that? Can I go up on the boat? Probably, right? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you guys see that? There was like a bridge. Is this a fucking jump? It is. See the little plank thing there? Nice. Cool. There's one left. Ooh, I can see it. Sick. So we're supposed to GPS track some um, truck, right? That's hopefully coming up. We're actually doing well on health, too. It certainly helps be a little more aggressive with using missiles. I'm so spooked, like, trying to shoot stuff. Oh, there's more of them. We're not done. There's got to be more. It's pretty cool. You can just like hop on over to the other side. I can't lock on. Please 
There we go. <laughs> Got it. Eventually. I wonder if I can lock on with the missiles and then... Because I can't lock on when I have the, the cannon equipped. But if I equip the missiles, if I can lock on and if the GPS thing then... Uh, well, that seems to go pretty well. I think we got all of the objectives, actually. I'm pretty sure we avoided civilian casualties, because I don't think there was a single civilian... Well, maybe those cars at the very end. I, th I think they were, like, police cars. So I guess it's, like, the mission objective is, like, don't destroy these two parked cars at the very end. Excellent. Uh, I guess we got smoke. Smoke. Like a smoke screen defense item. Still not clear to me if and if so how you can actually change your equipment. Because it seems like we've got the same weapons every mission. Oh wait. I guess we only had the oil slicks, but we, we now probably have the oil slicks and the smoke screen. Whereas the missiles I think just upgraded to a different type of missile. Uh, let's back down and see if... Um, no, I wasn't sure if there's like an equipment screen or something. No, we just see like stats. Ah, oh, right. This screen makes more sense now that we've played. So we can clearly see the objectives and, and all that stuff. So we've made it like a quarter throughout the game. I guess a third almost. Not a very long game as I would suspect. But if it gets harder and harder, then it still might take a good time to actually clear it. To be clear, I, um, I'll play this for as long as I enjoy it, but if we get stuck and it gets too hard, I made no, make no guarantees that we're actually going to see it all the way through. Uh, doesn't seem to be, you know, much of an issue so far, though. This is actually the first mission we cleared all objectives on. Nice. So, you got to be taking it a little slow and careful in terms of exploring alternate paths, but... Don't take it slow when it comes to dealing with enemies. Just shoot the shit out of them. <laughs> What's up, Lamasar? Playing a demo? Yeah, I feel like this this would make for a pretty good demo. I guess you can just like play any one of these levels and just like replay it and become really good at it. Uh, all right. Oh, there's like a they've, they've stolen and hacked a, they're an interceptor of their own, I guess. Anyway, we're gonna destroy it. Collect all SATCOMs, uh, destroy towers, avoid casualties. All right, we only need two. So as long as if we beat the mission and avoid casualties, that's enough to actually get us access to the next stage. Uh, but usually the the like destroy all X missions are not that difficult to get. So they don't put those like in too far off the beaten path compared to the SATCOM things that actually might require a little bit of trickery to find. Um, yeah, they like hijacked a truck and stole an inter the interceptor being the vehicle that we're currently driving, by the way. Oh, this looks nice. Same uh, sunset skybox. <laughs> Dark mutant. Well, I guess I, I don't know if there's much point on me commenting on that, but uh, I'll enjoy the show to the best of your ability. Alright, so I once again didn't really pay attention during the intro, but I think it, destroy towers, destroy the thing, avoid casualties, and get set. Oh, this way. This Wait, where was the set? I already forgot. Oh shit! Whoops! What a great start! Oh boy! Oh dude, it's like activating the smoke screen. Whoops! Right. So that's the challenge of this mission. Then I see. I figured it might be a chase then if it was like just sitting there. Oh, it has a life bar and shit down there. I see. Oh boy. Now we're actually spy hunting. 
Now this is spy hunting, is what I meant to say. Oh, for fuck's sake, fucking bicyclist. Hours left. I mean, if we're still gonna complete this. Well, we might die anyway. Let's all go through this for the practice of it. Weapons truck, huh? I guess I don't need to be too careful with the casualties since we already failed it. Last missile, so this is good. Whoa, how the fuck do I grab that? It's, what? I didn't. I didn't notice any branching paths. Let's just take a quick look. Can we go up there. Looks like we could be going up there. Oh, the branching might have been way earlier, though. Morning. Wrong way. Like, over here, fucking hidden bat cave bush. I see you. That's pretty cool. Got him. That's at least nice that you can kind of see stuff like that. So you get a little bit of a hint. I could have taken, you know what? That's like a secret hidden path. Was it? Oh wait, hang on, can I shoot that thing? This game is pretty cool. I probably wanted to go on the road there though. That's a good this, the, the level design is pretty interesting. It's like more than meets the eye. I'm a little torn on it because it's I guess it's meant to be, like, replayed. Uh, but, I don't know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, like, Tony Hawk, which I guess I also have on the brain right now because of the, the remake thing coming out, which I'm pretty excited for, by the way. Whereas in, like, where in the first Tony Hawk game, they had these, like, super linear downhill levels, uh, which were kind of a bit shit. And they had some open levels and some linear levels. And after the first game, they like never did the linear levels again, except as like kind of a callback thing. And obviously, these are not the same kind of game by any stretch of the imagination. But when you have these like hidden objectives and shit to explore and, and figure out, uh, having these, you know, oh wow, we have some like, waves. And shit. Being able to like miss a turn and like have to do several minute mission all over. It doesn't feel super great. But hey, we actually got all the sand pumps. I, I'm, that's not the mission I thought we would succeed. See, I can't shoot these guys because I can't lock on. Right, the car! Uh, oh yeah, I guess we super failed the mission. <laughs> I kind of forgot that we were chasing a car. How many spies have I hunted? Unclear. Uh, I think we are a spy though, so that makes up for it. Game looks pretty nice for early PS2. I definitely agree. Um, it's it's not ugly to look at by any means. Some things here and there look a little bit primitive, but it's not ugly. I mean, this inverted screen is a bit ugly, but. <laughs> that car. Pretty, pretty sick car. Well, I don't necessarily say, like, I feel like I'm not familiar or, like, entrenched enough with this game to determine whether that kind of level design is a detriment to the game or not. Um, 
I think for a game like Tony Hawk, it, it is so kind of free form and stuff that like those kind of linear levels really stand out. There's not much, like there's a clear uh, disadvantage or like uh, a clear weakness to those levels compared to the open levels, whereas there are no really clear like advantages or pros. Like it, it's kind of cool to do a little downhill race, but it's not like the, that game is about racing anyway. Like it's about chilling and doing tricks and finding finding cool routes. And even the fact that the level designed to go in one direction uh, instead of being able to be explored in all kinds of ways just make those levels way more uh, limited. And uh, and this you know this is a different scenario altogether because if the game had been like more open and there's like arenas to explore and shit I think I would have liked that a lot less um, and I think so the question isn't so much like should the games be more open to explore and would that make it better um, not at all it's more about the fact that like how punishing is it if you like don't figure out the secrets or whatever because that's the thing it hasn't been super clear like it seems to me more and more that it's not so much that there's a fork in the road and it's a guess, like 50-50, do I pick left and right or do I need to memorize the route? Is like left, left, right, right, left, right to get all the secrets. It's more that there is kind of a mainline path and you should be on the lookout for any alternate path because any alternate path is sort of bound to reward you with some alternate stuff. But yeah, I'm... It's definitely putting a bit of a spin on it with having to chase that car, and I wonder how much I fucked it up. Uh, maybe I should have just shot at it, because the missile didn't seem... The lock-on didn't work when I was in the smoke. The clear advantage is refining and nailing a sick line. Yeah, I mean, obviously your mileage is very... You can't really speak objectively to that, but personally speaking, I always thought the downhill levels in Tony Hawk were the, the worst ones by far. And I'm inclined to feel like the developers agreed, because they never did those levels again. Um, but like I said, it's it's not a one-to-one -one comparison because the, the, there's such different types of games. Um, but like I said, it, it's it. Before I get uh, like a really clear feel for it, I'm not sure what to make of it. I don't dislike it, but it can be like a little bit of a quirk, I guess. The question is, should I be? doing this. I am getting it. It's not doing an awful lot of damage, but... Fucking oil slicks! Oh, that was a different car. Fuck. Dude, like, he's really speeding up there. I'm using turbo, but it's still, like, a struggle to catch up. Yep, I'm out of turbo. I may have already missed the path here. I'm not sure if I should be doing something else in order to... Did I miss the left there? I think I just did. That's fine. I think I did less damage this this attempt than when I tried to shoot a bunch of missiles. Cool, I completely missed it, but I just got stuck on scenery. I actually hit this thing. <laughs> I think I jumped over him. Let's see what this route. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that answers that. Is he gonna catch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is catching up. Oh, 
Nice auto missiles, but. Wait. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there we go. Got him. Did we miss a SATCOM thing, though, is the question. We'll at least beat the stage, so... Ah. Shit. Need to go this oh, way. I guess we'll find out. There's one left, so I think we probably missed one. Probably missed a tower, too. I forget what the end of the level looked like. Ooh, that might be the last SATCOM at least. Let's try that again. We got three and a half minutes. There's a weapons boat, which isn't that helpful at after the end of the level, but we, we cleared it, at least. <coughs> Linear Tony Hawk is a design space that I feel hasn't been fully explored. Area but I also think manuals made the game worse. Whoa, what the actual heck? Did we get all four? How did we... I mean, I'll take it, but what the heck? <coughs> Our gun's upgraded. Alright, let me. I need to, like, an actually proper coffee. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I can get with that. I, um. Tony Hawk 2 is the one I play the most, but. Tony Hawk 3. Um, uh, you know, it. It moved from 30 roughly 30 to 60 fps it introduced um what's it called reverts which i think um tony hawk one like without the manuals and reverts things i think do feel a little bit limited like it's fine but it is just i mean it's kind of like comparing i don't know like street fighter 2 world warrior to super turbo where like street fighter 2 world warrior was a fine game um, certainly, you know, bugs and shit notwithstanding. <laughs> but shit got more exciting, and like as people got more used to the game, the level of difficulty, the level of complexity, the speed, and all that stuff, like just felt, you know, the original version just started feeling a little bit too bare bones. And I think that's probably true with something like Tony Hawk too, where <laughs> with Tony Hawk as well, um, that the shorter combos and stuff you can do just makes it feel a little bit more limited at the same time like just doing infinite manuals all over the map it kind of breaks the game but it's also really fun in my opinion uh, and I think the the reverts just like make the half pipe or like ramp stuff whatever you call it vert I guess is what you call it um, catch up like because in two there's like no reason to ever do vert stuff because it'll kill your combo. Um, but I mean, I think my lived experience, so to speak, is that Tony Hawk became way more fun with two. Um, but I understand, like, I can agree that it's just like it's, it's sort of flattens. I don't know. I, I guess it depends on the level layout and stuff too, where. Um, without manuals the other way to like have long sequences of tricks is just connecting grind and shit there's not that much else you can do it do and I guess maybe you know some levels definitely do let you do that a lot maybe the manuals could be like you can only do it once in a combo or there's like a 
much more of a hard limit because once you level up your character you can manual sort of forever um, like I absolutely understand the sort of complaint uh, but I do think ultimately I think the argument could be made absolutely that it sort of loses something that it ruins something however you want to put it but I don't think for me that the game became less fun I haven't played a lot of Tony Hawk in a long time, but I think that's that's how I feel about it. But yeah, I actually, I do have the Japanese version of Tony Hawk 3. I don't think I played it on stream, but I did play it a little bit offline a couple months ago. Um, and I was kind of tempted to, to mess around with that more, because I never played it back in the day, really. Like I said, I played 2 a lot, never really played 3 or 4, but I did play um, some of the later ones a little bit, like the Underground... Maybe I think I've tried Project H really briefly and like fell off it pretty immediately. <laughs> Running, yeah, the on foot stuff. I yeah, that's a bridge too far in my opinion. <laughs> what I'm much different in my opinion would be if manuals didn't add to your score or multiplier. Yeah, I can see like that. I think is a is a compromise that would make a lot of sense. Um, because I, I, I think the purpose of the multi or the the manual is to like maintain your your chain to connect stuff without ne needing uh, rails and stuff like I think by opening up the ability to chain things together beyond what's immediately connected already in the level like it just opens up for so many more possibilities but I do think getting score for it is a bit whack um, like if if you're you get a bunch of multipliers so you just like do ollies and kick flips and manualing like over and over uh i mean i guess the kick flips would still count somewhat but the manual adding score and multipliers i agree is probably it probably didn't need to do that but yeah i'll, I'll uh, most likely pick up the the new game because um it's been long enough since i played tony hawk and it seems to have been very well received it's got good reviews and for people who play the demo like it seems People seem to be happy with it. That um, uh, I'm probably going to pick that up. I'm far more excited about that than uh, Avengers. I can tell you that much. Um, we somehow got all four. So let's move on here. And uh, we also now still only need two points for this one. So that should be good. Colombian Extract. Let's see what this one's all about. Uh, are we supposed to escort the truck? seems like it destroy all the prototypes there's three of them collect the satcom balls and avoid casualties nobody's hyped the avengers games that's not what i've seen retweeted by the official avengers video game twitter all over my feed <laughs> the last 48 hours <laughs> uh, i'm very torn on that game like there's parts of it that i'm curious about and uh, would want like it's it's more that I would want to like it, but straight up I would be ten billion times more excited for that game if it was a linear action game. The online loot grind live game multiplayer, online live shit like just does not appeal to me whatsoever. I played a bit of the beta and like the two minutes of actual campaign story narrative linear action part was pretty cool. Like the combat still kind of sucked. But it was pretty cool. Uh, but like the on, like I didn't play multiplayer, but those missions, they were like so empty. You fight the same robot enemy, and like the combat. I played with Black Widow mostly, and she was kind of cool. You could do sort of fun stuff. Um, I mean, not by like action games with deep combat standards, but like Captain America, which you play for five seconds in the intro. Um, and Black Widow definitely seemed like the characters I was most interested in. Um, like, Hulk just feels pretty shit because he, like, he, even Hulk needs to smack, like, the lowest level enemy four times before they go down. And, like, it, it was... Ugh. And, like, the, you know, the, the, the mission maps come in, like, three styles. One is, like, there's two hallways in a room connected, and it's, the mission is, like, 40 seconds long. And the other type is like, you go into a completely empty city, or you go in completely empty, like, I almost call it wastelands, but, <laughs> you know, like, uh, wildlife fucking 
preserve or whatever, and it's just like completely open, empty space with nothing in it. Like all the maps are just completely empty. There's like no villains or cool people to fight, at least in the demo. It's all these like generic bots, and it's, ugh, it's just ugh, it's just so unexciting. But I am curious to um, the character character design sucks ass, obviously. Um, and there's like some cool, well, cool skins is maybe a bit of a stretch, but there's some costumes and stuff in the game that make the characters actually kind of look a little bit more like you would want them to. And it's still, you know, obviously rendered in this like realistic style, but it's an improvement for sure. It, it's the kind of game where I'm sure there's stuff in it that I would enjoy, but it's spread really thin over all this shit that I kind of can't stand. So I'm not at all excited to pay full price for it. But I could very much see myself paying it, uh, picking it up for cheap in the future. Like I might, I might still buy it because I haven't bought new games for like six months, and I'm like starting to feel a stupid itch to buy games. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the whole the structure, I agree. It's like, oh, it's just like in reading all these like blog entries and shit about the game too. Like it's coming out, and it's like. There's this, then this, and this, and that type of mission. It's refreshing every day, every week. Make sure to log in all the fucking time. Do your dailies. Don't miss a single chore on your checklist, or you will miss out. Like, ugh, I hate that shit. It's not what I'm... Like, I already have a day job. I don't need a second one. Uh, so, like I said, I want to play through the campaign. I would like to do that. And uh, I would... Like I said, there's, there's like, I had a little bit of fun here and there doing stuff with Black Widow in the demo, and I, I'd like to mess around with more characters, but I feel like playing the game, there's going to be even more of that stuff that's just, like, ugh, not feeling great. And, uh, yeah, I mean, not to get too deep into that, but I was so disappointed to see that uh, Gotham Knights, the new Warner Brothers Montreal game, seems to be basically that. Like, all the shit I don't like, I'm that that game is doing like they're oh. oh at least Gotham Knights seems like it might have level design which Avengers just does not seem to have at all it's just completely empty like Dynasty Warriors levels um, so that is maybe you know I think in its favor but it still seems to take like just the slight slightest bit of Arkham DNA and just like grafting it onto a just shitty online loot grind RPG thing. Ugh. Anyway, Spy Hunter on the PS2. That game is pretty good. How about we play that? Alright, we're in Panama. I forgot to check where the last mission actually was set, but whatever. My only doubt about the Avengers game is if IDOS will survive it or not. I mean, uh, IDOS already didn't survive. <laughs> um, I guess Crystal Dynamics. I don't know, because... Yeah, I forget how that delineation goes. But was Crystal Dynamics part of IDOS before the takeover? Um... Uh, I can't quite keep up. I always sort of forget. I mean, that's the thing, too. Like, it has famous characters in it. And it has all the monetization hooks. I feel like there's definitely going to be kind of a vocal crowd that are just, like, sort of bummed with the game. But they're also not going to really care about it. But I'm sure it's going to maybe not be the super ultra smash hit of the decade. But I feel like there's got to be plenty of people who are willing to stick with it, regardless of how good or bad it is. Uh, so, I can't, I don't know, I can't see it being like fucking Anthem or, you know, that kind of a, a flop. Like, people already seem excited enough about it. Like, having played the beta, people who enjoyed that and are excited to play the game. Um, so I don't know. But I'm also curious to just get a sense of how the game is once it's out. And that might change my tune. I don't know. I, I will play it, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but I'm not excited to jump on it, really. 
I mean, there's Tony Hawk is out um, tomorrow, I guess. Shit. And um, Splunky 2 is out in like a week or two. So I'm excited for that. And uh, I don't know. But I've, I've got Spy Hunter games to work through. And speaking of buying games, I do actually have another order of Japanese games on the way from um, Surigaya. I, uh, that same buying games itch that almost tempted me to buy Avengers, um, I channeled it in other directions and bought like a dozen old Japanese games. So uh, look forward to that in uh, at some point in the coming weeks. Yeah, Spelunky 2 is going to be interesting. I mean, I, I, I like Spelunky. I played it a bit, but I never got like super duper into it. But I'm definitely a big fan of Derek Yu and uh, Spelunky, so I'm excited to play Spelunky 2. I I'm personally probably more excited about UFO 50 than Spelunky 2, but obviously, like, both games are a must-buy as far as I'm concerned. All right, let's continue. So we got to protect this car, I guess. All right, rip check-ins. Wow. Didn't take a lot, did it? Did I just like outrun the truck and automatically fail? I thought I. Did I lock onto the fucking truck and destroy it myself? Let's, uh. Oh, I can actually check this. Interesting. Let's try again. Honto <laughs> desu That's a weird prompt. <clears throat> they just start aggressively discounting PS4s so I can get one just for Spelunky 2. Well, Spelunky 2 is like going to be on everything, isn't it? Should work on any computer. I can't imagine it being like extremely demanding. It's like the console. I don't know. It's like outrun. It's not like waiting to. Holy shit! Okay, it took damage. It wasn't like immediately. Oh, there you go. God damn! It's pretty fucking strict, isn't it? it? Doesn't have a lot of HP. I mean, we failed the mission, but let's just like let's recon. Did I fucking freeze? Yeah, I do have smoke. Oh, I should probably have jumped up there. Yeah, there's a sad calm. Right. Again, just research. I could have, it should have broken through there. Oh, cannot break through this penetrable fence. What am I exactly. Well, I don't have any missiles left, but what am I actually locking onto here? Not taking the road over there. Boat. I don't have a turbo either. This isn't even. Yeah, this is like the halfway point. Okay, cool. Fucking bombs just shoved me to the side. <laughs> How the fuck are you meant to protect the truck? Well, maybe the truck doesn't need to be escorted all this way. This seems like a bit Mission of a difficulty failure. spike. Interceptor destroyed. <clears throat> Only the PS4 date has been released. I see. I, I haven't been keeping up super closely. So you gotta like kind of know what's coming, and you gotta like. Mm. I guess. Kind of move ahead and clear the path. Maybe? Is this a way of doing this?
Can I trust that more enemies aren't gonna come? Am I gonna at least draw their fire? I don't know. Explosions are cool, but it's kind of fucking hard to see what's going on. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. You only need to escort it that far. Okay, so it's actually pretty pretty straightforward. Destroy the prototype. Okay, so that's here in the water. Okay, I think we can live with not getting the SATCOMs, and we'll uh, continue like this and hope for the best. It, it seems to be a pretty short mission, too. So... Right, oh, you gotta... I see, the prototypes are, like, loaded up on the ship. Pretty cool. The missions are pretty cool in this game. I like this game. One prototype left. Like, they definitely get pretty original with, like, sort of obstacles and shit. And, you know, just tracks in general. It's not just, like, driving through city streets. I mean, I think definitely this is something a game like this has over something like Wheelman. I really enjoyed Wheelman. At least for the most part. Maybe until the very end. Um, but ultimately, because it is set in that city, like, it, it gets a little samey as far as environments go. They don't really get to go too crazy. Compared to something like this with, like, bespoke tracks. So... Prototype left. Wait, I? I feel like the isn't the mission like over? Oh, you oh. It looked like I could get inside that boat, and I guess I could have because there's a satcom thing there. Ooh, hang on. Let's see if I want to. Never mind. Okay, it looked like I could cross over there. Do I go inside this thing? I'm not getting any, like, target things. So I'm a little confused. I feel like the stage is, like, longer this time somehow. I feel like I wouldn't miss a giant red circle. Oh, there we go. Oh, shit! Taking off! Alright, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's awesome. It's like takes off, you have to chase it. See, like, shooting these guys and having them go down in, like, one shot, that is satisfying. Wait, okay, no man. Okay. okay, makes sense that the stage feels longer, because I forgot that I fucking died last time. For some reason, I thought I completed the level, I just had failed the objective. Fucking Harrier jets and shit. It's pretty cool. There is the area nice. cleared. Alright, three objectives, not too bad. We got an EMP. I guess that's uh, probably a defense item? A defense weapon, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so I got a little hus um, hustle. That's not the word, what's the word? Frazzled? <laughs> I can't do English. I got a little frazzled about the truck thing at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure that, like, Knowing how far you need to take it, it's it's it dies very quickly, but you don't need to take out that many enemies. So you can just kind of boost ahead and just take out that tower, take out those trucks, and then not worry about it, and then just focus on getting the SATCOMs. 
And I'm pretty sure I saw... I think I got one and I basically saw the other one, so it should be... Shouldn't be that big a deal to complete this level. So I thought this was like a big difficulty spike, but not really. If you if you'd had to, uh, <clears throat> if you'd uh, be forced to escort the truck all the way through, uh, <laughs> that'd be a problem. Well, I guess the truck would have struggled to get <laughs> across the river, <laughs> or the canal, or whatever. IES testing facility. Okay, is this another like practice track? Uh, oh shit, Shinkatsu no Interceptor Type 2. Alright, so. Uh... Alright, so we got a new car, I guess? The new Interceptor Type 2. Interesting. Alright, sure. Let's go for it. And now we have the opportunity to get a whole bunch of different uh, objectives. Nice. Yeah, the water's pretty cool in this game. It's, like, pretty simple, but, uh, pretty nice for 2001, for sure. So, yeah, destroy all targets, um, hit the slalom gates, uh, don't hit the cones, uh, EMP, knock out your targets using the EMP, avoid the lasers, it's 75 meters on the turbo jump and avoid casualties. So assuming the track is the same, I hit like 64 meters or something on the turbo jump last time. I don't even know what I could do. I guess it's a matter of um, how far ahead you use the turbo so the turbo doesn't like run out, but you still give yourself enough of a run up to actually gain as much speed as possible. Huh. New car might be fast. That's for, that's true. We might have an actual different car. That well, we definitely will have a different car. Uh, but we might have a car that actually is faster or works differently. That did not occur to me because uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, there's some jumps and shit. Makes sense that the track like the track looks like it's the same, but the obstacles are more complex. Pretty much what I would expect. Shoot the targets. EMP. Okay, I'm. I'm not sure how to use the EMP. Wait, what? Avoid the hidden lasers. Oh, it looks like almost the jump was bigger. Oh shit! This car looks fucking even cooler. Um. Yeah. How do we? Let me. Let me consult the manual here real quick. Let me see if. Um, let me see if it addresses. I mean, it might be obvious that it's just a, like, defense weapon, but I think we actually have a... Uh, there is a section that explains all the weapons and stuff. Uh, Interceptors weapon. Weapons data file. Uh, offensive weapons. There's a whole bunch. Okay, the EMP is an offensive weapon. I see. So I guess you probably just activate it, and um, do you like lock? Oh, there's a rail gun. Shit, that's gonna be sick. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I guess you just equip it. Maybe you lock on. Maybe not. I mean, it doesn't make sense that you'd have to lock on, right? Uh, let me just see if I can make sense of what it says here. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I guess it says specifically that using the Interceptor Type 2. Suddenly uh, target to lock on Alright, so it sounds like we actually do want to lock on. Well, let's see if we can figure this out. We're gonna have to swap around because it looked like the targets that we're supposed to hit requires us to. Like they're all um, elevated, which would mean that we need the missiles to lock on. Or any weapon that'll lock on, but that's. Not the Vulcan cannon, whatever, 15 millimeter. So there's like, you get upgrades, weapons get better as you get more points, but you also, certain weapons just get added. So we got smoke puff and the uh, oil slick. And on this side, we got those three. 
Alright, Slalom Gates. Seems a little trickier, perhaps. Gotta do fucking jumps. I don't want to spend too much turbo boost. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Go up here. That's what I couldn't figure out the first time. <laughs> that was fucking close. <laughs> See, I, like, I don't have a lot of turbo boost left. Oh, shit. Wait, what the? What? How do I fucking GPS track these things? not what I'm supposed to do. This circle thing just... Do I hold it? What the fuck do I do? I don't need to consult the manual. I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to GPS. Hang on. No, there's nothing about GPS saying... I guess I'm supposed to EMP those? But I don't get it. Like, hitting circle... Um, brings up that yellow Terminator vision cone thing. Like, that doesn't seem to be what I'm supposed to do. Is that like a hidden... Okay. I guess I need to, like, locate the hidden aliens. Right, so these, I, there's a lot of buttons to keep track of here. Right, so that's what I was talking about, too. These are elevated, so I need to actually lock on and shoot the missiles. I don't know if make this easier. It's just the fact that I can't, um, I gotta be a little bit careful about how I use my missiles. The EMP thing is gonna come up here probably, right? Well, not just yet. Oh! Shit, I was not ready for that. <laughs> I see you. Barely, though. Okay, it doesn't like completely close, that's good. So the EMP thing was in the water too, right? Yeah. Uh, wait, there we go. Lock on? Oh, it's like already, it's locking on automatically, I guess. Maybe? Maybe not? Oh, I need to go like up on that little fucking ramp to hit it. I'm not sure about this whole lock-on thing I was talking about. I might have completely misread it when it says you're completely unable to lock on. I also fucked up the civilian casualties. So I guess this doesn't really matter. Alright. I was uh, being optimistic thinking I might be able to just do this first try, but I guess there were too many fucking frog buttons and shit. I see the yellow thing and I just hit circle, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, there were too many differences in features between these two cars. More than I expected, so I got definitely a bit tripped up here. There we go. So we got at least like two or three. So it's like the turbo jump you gotta worry about. No more EMP. Oh, invisible lasers! Aha! Dude, that was like complete luck. But I just activated this vision mode. <laughs> so we gotta avoid some cones. Might be a truck up here? Was last time at least. And I think turbo jump is like kind of... Oh. 51 meters. See? Like, I boosted... It didn't seem like... I don't know. I guess I... I was going pretty slowly before I started boosting. I guess that's the problem. So I wasn't... 
expect I, like, I wanted to be careful to see what was coming up. I didn't want to be driving too too aggressively. It certainly doesn't feel like this car is like that much faster, but I guess it's it might have a higher top speed. And I just didn't have the range to get speed before. Yeah. Objective failed. What was the main objective? What was the main objective? I mean, I wanted to redo it anyway, but... Avoid the cones. The slalom targets. Yeah, find the hidden enemies using the scanner. Destroy... Oh, maybe the hidden enemies was the main... I mean, we'll, we'll check, but... Avoid the hidden lasers. That one's pretty straightforward. Turbo jump. So just keep in mind, like, once you open that last door after the water section, that's the jump coming up immediately. So, let's um, bring up the pause menu. Oh, dude! It actually saves the one... No. Fuck, never mind. <laughs> I was like, it saved the one we cleared, but no, that's because those are... Uh, they're cleared, so to speak, until you fail them. Uh, the ones that are filled in, it's just all about avoiding stuff. Avoid the cones, avoid the lasers, avoid casualties. So once we fail avoiding them, they'll get unchecked. Man, I got excited there for a second. Yeah, the main objective is to defeat the hidden enemies. Man, you gotta use fucking Batman vision in this car. I mean, I guess it's kind of novel, but it's a little obnoxious, too. You gotta be pretty aggressive with the speed. I mean, I use the turbo, but I guess the turbo is also going to be very dependent on your actual speed before you use the turbo, but clear the jumps to avoid the cones in this first slalom section. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty unforgiving. I mean, I cleared it last time, but only very barely. Objective failed. Um, well, we'll still keep going there. I got so excited about going fast that I just fucked up. Dude, see? Like, it's not easy. It's kind of a miracle that I... Right, you go up here. Kind of a miracle that I did it the first time, honestly. See, I didn't even get fucking close. But I was at like 140 when I used the turbo. Alright, it's like highlighting which I should scan. And that might be a thing when we're going for boats too. Uh, there's like a lot of buttons to keep track of honestly. It's kind of satisfying when you get it down though. Not gonna lie. One target left. Oh yeah, there was one target in the boat section, I think. That would make sense. Yep. Oh, I missed it. There we go. I guess so far the game hasn't been very demanding in terms of all right, that was cool. In terms of actually like maintaining a high speed, but it looks like that's what this course requires for a lot of the stuff. Uh, turbo isn't really, I mean, it can obviously speed you up. Uh, but it's gonna... It's gonna like not it's not gonna help solve all your problems <laughs> uh, if you didn't like it doesn't negate the need to actually the need for speed if you will it doesn't negate the need to actually be driving decently well and keeping up with speed it does lock on kind of but very sort of narrowly 
Did we fuck up the casualties on this attempt too? Lasers! Again. I mean, I'll try not to fuck it up further if I can avoid it. So I think the jump is coming up here. Just kind of fucking book it. Like, dude, 33 meters? What the actual fuck? I mean, I didn't have a ton of... Tr I, dude, I, like, didn't let go of the gas. Luckily, I can go back here. I fucked up the cones anyway. I mean, I'm not gonna, um, the game's not gonna recognize my multiple attempts here, but. I just wanna understand. How I'm meant to use the turbo. That's the biggest point of confusion for me, because it doesn't seem to give me a lot of time to actually build speed with it. Whoa, holy shit, okay. I don't think I cleared 75, actually. But I did get up to like 300 something kilometers per hour, and uh, I got a lot more air. Like, noticeably more. Wow, okay. We're actually, the handling is pretty damn good. <laughs> Somehow got through there basically without letting go of the gas. But you lose a lot of speed for turning. That's what makes that jump so hard. Well, we cleared the main objective. I did we? I don't think we did. Oh, we got a cool cutscene here, so I guess we did. I thought there was like three targets still to go or something. No, I guess there's like nine highlighted cars, but you're only supposed to shoot six of them. Area cleared. Continued application of the turbo. I mean, once I activated the turbo, I never let go. It just runs out really quickly. Um, and uh, I don't think that's the, the thing anyway, because I did on my failed attempt, well, I guess I failed all of them, but um, on my actual attempt in this run, I I think I used the turbo too late. So it was definitely like still active while I was in the air. On the final jump that I test jump I did to where I got at least close to 70, I activated it much earlier. So I think the, the point is to just build up enough speed before you take off and um, the way you activate the turbo is to um, double tap the accelerator. So you have to let go for a split second to even activate it. Um, but it just doesn't seem to build. It's not like an instant. It doesn't like add to your speed. It takes time to, to build up that speed. So uh, makes sense. But it feels awkward like that with that turn. It's hard to get in there with enough speed to even use the turbo properly. Because that's the thing too, in my first attempt, or previous attempts, I tried to use the turbo to build speed, which obviously, yes, it does make you go faster, but your final speed that you, your final top speed is going to be dependent on how fast you were going when you activated the turbo. So, it's kind of a tricky situation. Anyway, we at least qualified. But we do need four more points for this, so we're definitely not going <laughs> to clear that. Uh, are we going to repeat levels here? Find out, I guess. It's another escort mission. Uh, we need to safely deliver the IES member, the VIP person, whatever. Very important person person. Uh, destroy... Electric power or something, something, I guess. Uh, okay, so we're going to disable bombs using EMP. I'm glad that we'll, we'll probably see what they look like in the startup thing, because I'm sure they're not going to have a big sign that says EMP on it, like the training. And avoid casualties. Hopefully the escort mission is nice and quick. Like in the previous mission. But even then, like, I doubt I'll get it first try. We're in Dover, England. 
7 o'clock. I guess there's hidden lasers here too. The hint, it's, the hint it's given us is to use the scanner to detect hidden lasers. Their lasers used to defend... Okay, those are the bombs. Okay, they're pretty obvious. <laughs> EMP those things. Destroy that shit. Uh, escort the IES boat. <laughs> okay. Man, it looks cool in boat form. Are they on screen? I can't see shit. What the fuck are these guys? Shit. Out of nowhere. What even is this weird tunnel? The escort thing isn't maybe at the beginning like it was in that previous mission? Still, there's definitely good variety. It looked on the thumbnail like this was like a different map that we'd already done, but clearly not the case. Oh, there they are. I'm sorry, dudes. I missed. Ooh, I missed that tower and that tower. A lot of shit to lock on to here. Was that them up there? No, that's the weapons boat. Oh, is that their pickup? Looks like it. Yeah, we got him. Sick. How about the bombs and shit? I don't know what I might have missed, but... <laughs> Fucking bone boxes look like bombs. Oops, that's easy. Oh, maybe I should. There's so much shit to keep track of. Maybe not. much of a chance to find that so do I get to turn left here somewhere kind of oh the reverse is so weird so that's kind of fucked you just missed that opportunity wholesale because that did not seem like a very obvious like real path and bonus path or whatever okay. did I even like get it Uh, this seems... Okay. Well, well. I think that's a lost cause. Can I maybe go around this train? I guess so. Time might even be a factor at this point with all this fucking around we're doing, but... We'll see. We're kind of learning the, the level. It's like, I think you need to be coming up... Because you would probably end up on that platform, because as long as I'm down on the tracks... Like, yeah, I can't get the shot to go up there. But this is where you'd fall down after hitting that path. So I go left there next time, I guess. Maybe go right here. Like, that's the part I don't like when it's just not, you know, when you have two sort of equal options. Ooh. 
least you can get it from But I think you probably need to be driving on this little... Well, can you even get up here? There's probably a little ramp to get up here. Yeah, exactly. I love that killing dudes is so easy. Like, again, Wheelman got a little tedious with the tanky enemies, especially the motorcycle dudes who ran like four times. But here, let me go up here. All right, backing up is weird. The timing, the timer, rather, is a little tight, probably. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I'd need to get up here. Oh, that's a lost boss. Screw it. Okay, we're at the end of the map, at least. Yeah, this is a tricky one. Just figuring out the, what you're supposed to do or where you're supposed to go. I <laughs> like those little cutscenes. <laughs> Just hitching a ride. Perfectly smooth fucking train route. <laughs> Alright, that's awesome. That's awesome. So how did that go then? I think we did the escort. So we cleared the level. Area cleared. Yeah, okay. I think we're missing two points for the next level. Yeah, the fucking underground whatever shit. I didn't even see that. It's only the one thing, though. So I guess it might not have been in the route I took. You gotta flame something or else, something or other. Uh, let's say there, please. This game is pretty cool. I'm, I'm digging this. It's uh, pretty tough, but... Not, like, you know, even the stages that we didn't clear or reach the goal on our first attempt, we haven't really gotten stuck on anything. Most of the things I've, like, retried a few times, I've gotten the hang of, so. Also, I guess we, uh, we kind of made it past the halfway point. I'm getting 57. In fact, let me go back. No, nope, that's not what I meant to do. Alright, so we get... It makes sense, I guess, that some of the requirements um, start increasing. It's not like an even uh, four minutes or four minutes. I was looking at the time. <laughs> four objectives per map. Like, uh, I mean, the requirements don't increase in increments of four because the actual number of ones you get change. Wow, man, I can't I really cannot talk. <laughs> um. go back this far, but that's fine. But it's saving. What? I didn't... What? Okay. I pressed circle to confirm, and it just saved. So I pressed X to back out, and that just backed out. I guess I need to save and load two more times to get back to the menu. That's fine. Yeah, I like that the stages are short. I don't... I wouldn't wish them to be any longer. Um... And I think it makes perfect sense to have a game like this where you don't need to load the fucking memory card. It should be in memory already. All right, whatever. There we go. Um, you know, it's 14 stages. There's a couple. There are a couple of minutes each, minutes each, and the fact that you're clearly meant to sort of replay and, and improve your score and sort of have to learn to do each mission, if not perfectly, at least better to to progress, means that the combined time to sort of beat the game and be done with it is not as little as, you know, 14 stages times 3 minutes or 4 minutes. Um, but, obviously, like, you could speedrun this game pretty quickly. In fact, like, once you'd beaten the game and learned it, you would probably fairly comfortably be able to clear each mission kind of on your first try. But I don't consider that an issue, of course. Like, I'm not, you know, I like short games. Uh, but I like that, that the structure incentivizes kind of revisiting and mastering and learning each stage uh, it's a cool game i definitely quite like it like i would say maybe the reason i'm not 
completely over the moon is at the end of the day it's still a driving game and i'm not great at it and like it's not my favorite type of game but as far as one of those types of games go i'm really appreciative of the a lot of the design decisions in this game i'm really curious what the other spy hunter games are like but like imagine again the rock game that has like on foot segments and shit i bet that game doesn't have like levels like this either I'm sure it has like a linear narrative shit or whatever. I'm, I'm really curious to see what bad mid 2000s game design trends made its way into that game, executed poorly. Um, so we failed the cones and we failed the jump. Fuck, can we really? So here's the question. If I do this one, Will it, will we, you know. I still think the first one. Yeah, we, we, uh, we didn't figure out the GPS boat thing. So I can at least do that one. Let's do the first one again. Because I'm curious again to see. I'm going to assume that the game is strict enough to actually require us to get all of these in a single run. But I'm not entirely positive. I mean, I guess, I don't remember exactly what it looked like the last time, but I would assume that if it sort of saved the fact that we had cleared certain ones last time, that they would be sort of checked. But, you know, if it's still, you know, that doesn't make sense to me, if only because there are missions that are like, don't fail X. And it would be weird if, like, just because we had been able to clear the goal without killing civilians, that we now wouldn't need to worry about it Begin so i'm operation. sure we have to actually do everything oh yeah we're back to the original car we don't actually like whoa okay forgot i was using analog control thing the car like upgrade isn't like a permanent upgrade it's just permission which car you're using i do like that the game like that there's a timer the timer isn't like super like the time limit isn't very necessary i don't think it's appropriate though, um, but I like that the game keeps track of time, like for your records. So even if you learn to get all the objectives, and that's not a big deal. There's still a matter of improving your best times for each track, which I'm sure for people who are like quite into uh, driving shit, could be an incentive in and of itself. Almost fucked that up again. <laughs> Built for replaying, yeah, for sure. That's how I think games should be done. Like, uh, replay value, you know? It's such a dubious proposition. Um, it tends to be so synonymous with stuff that's not part of the game. Whereas I think the best replay value you can have in a game is when the game itself is just fun to play and replay. If I'm not mistaken, I think one crash is okay. I think, I need to look it up again. I did look up a little bit about the developers of these games, this game and the other two, uh, PS2 uh, Spy Hunter games. And I forget which was which, but one of the developers, I want to say, went on to make the Stuntman games, or at least some of them. And I was always interested in those games. I thought they seemed really cool. And I, I think I got one of them. Stuntman Ignition, I think, which was a PS2 game. It was released on PS4. It's one of those, like, PS2... No, on PS3, I guess, it must have been. And I remember buying that and playing it, like, once. Barely remember anything of it. But I always loved the idea of those games. Of, like, short stages and, like, mastering specific sequences and I thought it seemed pretty cool but I don't know you know having not really played those games much I don't know what they're like in terms of how fun they are to play beyond the premise being cool but that's the thing because I have no interest in cars as like 
hobby and the the act of driving. I mean, I don't drive in real life. I don't have a license. Oh yeah, right. They uh, fucking ran away. That's the thing. There we go. I was too slow last time. That's why I didn't clear this. Alright, let's, uh... Nice. Even then, like, margin of error there wasn't huge. Hmm. Shit, I forgot there's more cones. Ooh, that was a little bit too close. Approaching weapons van. Shit. <laughs> Alright, we did it. Never mind, I forgot the track doesn't end there. <laughs> I don't think there's like anything left though. Maybe there's more cones? But yeah, given that like the premise of driving a car, it, like that in itself is like completely neutral, I guess. Like it doesn't, I'm not excited about, you know, if a, if a pitch for what a game is begins with like, all right, so you're driving a car. Like for me, that's an whatever it's not an exciting starting point Area cleared. it's just what you do with it um you know if you're driving a car on a movie set and you have to follow instructions to create these cool set pieces all right you got something if you're driving a cars and it's fucking sega blue skies outrun 2 you can drift and it's fucking sick like sure all right i'm i'm into it we can work with that so i i do like I can enjoy driving if there's a uh, more novel sort of setting or purpose to it beyond just racing or, I don't know, even even in a game like, I don't know, GTA or that kind of open world, like driving around or driving a car or like what's the car handling like, like those questions, like I don't even, uh, it doesn't even, I don't even think about it really, but if you can come up with a premise where you drive and there's like combat like this or the thing i like a lot about wheelman again was like the whole uh side swiping tackling system and like the vehicular combat was really cool uh and i feel like that's kind of an possibly underserved niche all right i'm trying to look here what other stuff we missed earlier on almost with the sat comms did get full Full marks on some levels there. Uh, dude, the 75 meter fucking jump. I don't know. Maybe if I did it just as perfectly as with the 69 meter and maybe this car is like faster. Shit, it's like getting full speed through that curve and like straightening up early enough that you can stop turning and just stay s straight and use the turbo. Like it's not that easy. And the jumping over the cones too like I'm, again I don't understand how I actually did it the first time but if we can clear all these other things and get the jump or get the cones we actually have enough for the next level so let me try this one more time location United States of America Texas 7 o'clock every mission is fucking 7 o'clock <laughs> Um, oh yeah, it even says, like, using this, the new, I guess it's x-ray scanner or something like that. Infrared. You can see things that are invisible to the naked eye. I wonder if you can maybe fudge those jumps by driving, like, crawling to the outside of those cones possible the EMP shit seems finicky in general like based on this level and the one after it like because you can't affect the height it seems like you always have to like take a very specific route to get in the correct like vertical position Begin operation. it's a little funky all right cones just practice high speed cone dodging 
yeah, like you, you lose a lot of speed. We're making turns. Uh, jumps and shit now, right? Here's the part I'm curious about. Come on, break. Okay, so back up. Okay, there's something to the fucking acceleration. Obviously, I went way past it there. Back up. Well, time, I guess, isn't too much of a factor, and you build up the meter pretty quickly. Objective failed. Oh, shit! That's not how it worked in the last one. Okay, but let's... There's no way you're getting past that. Let's just... This is research. I just try to build up speed like this. Dude, that's fucking not enough. Well, let's see. You know, we might still have a shot at getting the jump. And if we were to finish this track with the jump... Dude, you have to fucking turbo boost this. Um, we'll see how it counts our... Um, credits, or whatever you want to call them. We're basically going to fail everything. And if we make that jump... Oh, shit. Wrong body. Go! Oh, oh, shit! Uh, we're not doing great. I just want to see what, how it's going to count those things. Like, if we clear something that we didn't clear before, how, you know, is it, and if so, how is it going to count towards our totals? I guess I don't need to worry about the gates now. <laughs> Simplifying this a little bit. Not that it was, like, the hardest thing. Generic PS2 City. Yeah, I saw the cleaners sign. Oh, yeah. I was scared that I missed it. The projectiles are just kind of slow. Yeah, I might have to fire two projectiles, but yeah, we gotta keep speed here to actually make this little jump. Oh, I'm gonna fucking land on a boat. Okay. Did I fuck up the civilians already? Probably. Oh shit, lasers. I can't believe I'm, like, managing to remember that every time. <laughs> yeah, I think we're... fucked with civilians. At this rate. Okay, here we go. The moment of truth. Ah, I didn't even fucking get over 300. I needed, I needed to start boosting sooner. But I think the real problem is lining yourself up so you, like, stop turning. Uh, because you can't pick up speed until you stop turning. Fucking nailing this part, though. Like, you, well, technically, I guess you can make a very slight turn and still be building up speed, but not... A, a sharp enough turn that you actually need to, to you know, get through that curve. Uh. Area cleared. So I didn't actually... I didn't actually clear any one that I hadn't cleared before. So we still don't... We still can't confirm. Alright, let me try this one again. I don't need to save... Technically, maybe we got a new time record. I don't know. I don't really care, but... I forgot to mention, by the way, as far as uh, managing to get through this game, um, I believe there are cheat codes and passwords and stuff. Oh, yeah, there's even an enter cheat code thing on the main menu. So in the interest of at least seeing the entire game, uh, that should not be too much of a problem, I imagine. 
Uh, we're not going to see the entire game tonight, because I'll be wrapping up quite soon. Uh, but I want to play this more. This game is fun. It might be frustrating uh, trying to make progress. Like, I'm sure progress is going to be a lot slower <laughs> in the second half. Uh, but I'm certainly not, like, done with the game. It's pretty fucking sick. Don't hit this fucking backwards. But yeah, you build up turbo pretty damn quickly, so I maybe mean, don't need to be super conservative about the actual like meter. Is there another jump or yeah, yeah there is. Wow, oh, you got a boost so fucking early, and I still got. Oh boy. Not to hit the other cars. Yeah, you don't really get confirmation that you actually clear that part. We have difficulty ramping up for sure in terms of. Oh, for fuck's sake! Ah, let's let's try again. <laughs> one of the better early 2000s cool and edgy reboots well that's the thing i think this i've been thinking about that recently in terms of like reboots because i was thinking too like wow this seems a little out of time like was rebooting stuff happening much in because i definitely think of it much more of as a like 360 xbox live arcade kind of thing uh getting remakes and reboots of old ips but if you think about it, like, there's actually quite a lot of them on, like, the PS2. Um, and then I thought about it for, like, five seconds more and realized that, you know what? I spent, like, a week playing fucking Pitfall on the PS1. And even that wasn't, you know, there was the the Pitfall the Mine adventure, like, several years before that, even. Uh, obviously not in terms of, like, being gritty or whatever but I think this that aesthetic and like style and sense like is this part of that I don't know like I feel like I can you can sort of uh, for me like that specific trend or that specific like aesthetic that specific Attitude, I don't know what you would call it exactly. It's something I associate with a slightly different period than this. Because, I mean, Barman Act Zero is like 2006, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't think it was early enough to be 05, but somewhere around that. And I think that's a period that I may be more associated with that kind of thing. In 2001, like... Things weren't quite as gritty, I guess. Uh, but it just kind of made me realize that, like, you know, reboots are, you know, um, decades in the making, sequels, etc. Like, I kind of all lumped it all together because in a lot of ways it's kind of... synonymous or like you know the distinction is kind of meaningless uh, and I'm thinking like maybe I'm just making the connection too because of the setting of this game but I feel this is more I feel I think less of stuff like Bomberman X Zero and more about the Mission Impossible movies uh, and that kind of rebooting to make it like not not dark and gritty and edgy necessarily, but just like modern. Uh, like make it feel like this isn't your dad's spy hunter, like whatever. Uh, so yeah, I do think this, like, I think there's more of a, uh, like that specific thing I think is a little bit later. I think this is indeed like, 
part of a slightly different paradigm. But in general, that the whole cool. I'm yeah, it's, oh my god, I fucking fucked up everything really badly there. So the jump, what was the other one that I didn't complete? Something I didn't complete this time either, I'm sure. Uh, I'm just annoyed that I'm playing poorly. New Tetris, but yeah, like, I guess clones or whatever at this point. Oh, you can get up to, like, fucking 400. Maybe it was all wrong. Maybe I just do need to use the boost just way earlier for that jump. I don't fucking know. But yeah, like I said, it's just more... Uh, turbo jump. Was it the cones? Did I never complete the cones? It must have been the ones... I never cleared. I thought I cleared the cones once, but maybe I didn't. Oh, I cleared the cones on my very first try, but I failed the actual main objective. So of course that didn't save. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, sorry, I, I was really into it and getting a little stressed, so I, my ability to form a coherent sentence was definitely dipping there. but. Yeah, just kind of going back to the idea of, like, thinking about reboots and remakes and ports and sequels and whatever. Like, just bringing back old stuff. Um, I think in 2001, it, it certainly wasn't, like, trailblazing. Um, because, yeah, there had been stuff like the various pitfall things. I mean, it, that wasn't... Um, it wasn't a huge thing, I'd say. But it, it wasn't literally, like completely unheard of. I'm trying to think, I want to say like Midway had done stuff like that before, but maybe more so about like, because Midway was pretty good. Once they had the, because uh, I think the Atari stuff was, I forget when, but like when uh, Williams kind of acquired a lot of the Atari stuff, because they put out a bunch of these like Midway, Williams, Atari, arcade classic stuff. Um, which obviously isn't the same thing as this, but it, just like acknowledging and embracing the legacy of old stuff um, was definitely not the same kind of thing it is today. Like you had Namco putting up the Namco Museum stuff on PS1, which was pretty great. And you had stuff like those, some of those Williams and Midway stuff. And you know, Midway, there's the Midway arcade treasures on PS2 and Xbox, uh, but there were stuff going back earlier than that. Yeah, Gauntlet is definitely, uh, Probably a more major example. We even have the the ad right here for uh, is it Dark Legacy, I think. Yeah, on the back of the manual here. Uh, I don't have the timeline of all the Gauntlet stuff really straight, but for sure that's definitely a thing. <clears throat> Defender, yeah, Defender actually. Uh, well, not Defender. What am I thinking of? Uh, uh, Tempest. Uh, I mean, Tempest 2000 was like a not a huge big thing, but it was like. It was a really good, cool thing. Uh, yeah, Robotron, I'm not sure if I'm... Uh, I mean, the original, obviously, I know. But I'm not sure if I know Robotron on N64. But, yeah, it checks out with that un... <laughs> imprecise, but still strong image I had in my head that Midway was doing that kind of thing. Uh, for sure. Um... It wasn't quite the industry-wide thing it would start becoming more in the following years after this. Uh, but like Sega, of course, you know, they did uh, Shinobi and Kunoichi. They had the Altered Beast game, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, hell, Afterburner Climax, Outrun 2. Uh, that kind of shit. I'm trying to think, like, I'm sure there's a lot of other examples, big and small. But it's interesting to think that There were the idea of bringing back old stuff in new forms or in some form or another was kind of always around. 
Um, it just kind of has taken different shapes. Like, I feel nowadays, it's far more uncommon. Like, the, you, you see far more of, you know, the same IPs continually getting new games. And some of them have been around for a long time at this point. Like, I don't know, fucking Call of Duty or whatever is pretty old. Uh, it's from around 2000-something, right? Uh, but it's, you know, they never stopped putting out new ones. They're, they're remaking and porting shit, too, but it's like, you know, the original Call of Duty is older today than the original Spy Hunter was when this game came out. Time is weird. Yeah, I played uh, Afterburner Climax on the Deluxe Cabinet uh, a couple of times when I was living in Japan. It was definitely an experience. <clears throat> Space Emitters Invasion Day, the epitome of pretty 2000s reboots. Yeah, Final Fight Streetwise is a real embarrassing example. You know, I think that that kind of strengthens my case too. That um, you know, Final Fight Streetwise is also like a 2006 something, 2005, 2006 game. And by that point, you know, things were edgy and gritty and dark, and you know that fun, silly vibe. I, mean, I think I feel like that period too, like the sort of um, it, think of the difference between like the N64 and the GameCube in terms of perception like N64 was like oh holy shit Mario, Zelda, Star Fox whatever whereas the GameCube was like holy shit this thing is for kids I'm gonna go play my adult Xbox and, and that kind of general perception of like you know you get fucking uh, ads with Mario with fucking tribal cats to, to advertise the the GBA SP with the tribal tat designs, it was a, an embarrassing period for sure. Uh, but I think that that explains, or like, it, it, you know, to some degree, why you know the new versions of like the it, the way to sort of make something old feel modern was to kind of put that um, coat of paint over it uh, and you have like uh, I mean I really want to check out the Rock Spy Hunter game to see how it is with that sort of shit but I did play uh, Narc on stream and I think that's also 06 or something it's a pretty late game uh, and it's you know the original Narc is so incredibly over the top and goofy and I mean yeah the reboot is too of course it's really goofy but it really uh, is a different flavor. I mean, it's opposed to GTA 3 NARC game, that's for sure. Uh, and the, the Mario Strikers games definitely seem pretty cool to me as far as like style and personality goes. The artworks are pretty cool, at least. Uh, but sure, that's of a time as well, definitely. But yeah, it's, it's fun too because I, I've been talking as well uh, previously about sort of my, what I would like to see more of in terms of old game IP. I'd love to see something like this where it's appropriate. Uh, and I think this is a perfect case of like, of sort of re... I hate the word reimagining. It's such a like marketing buzzword sort of, sort of word, but... You know, this is clearly not a direct adaptation of the gameplay mechanics of the original Spy Hunter, right? They're adapting the concept of the setting and the sort of uh, broad idea of what the game is, but putting it in 3D, making the controls different in a way that faithfully recreates the atmosphere and tone and style and like the power fantasy that you get through the game experience. And I think that's you know, perfectly appropriate way of bringing something back in some cases. Um, I will say that they at least, you know, I'm sure that's going to probably be a big difference between this and the Rock Spy Hunter, if I had to guess. That this game is still much more simple and straightforward. You got levels, you got missions, you got a timer, you got points. I would imagine that that game is much more like, you know, modern and a linear adventure or whatever. So in some ways, this game is still like really old school or kind of like Pitfall 3D, right? 
that game was also really kind of old school with the levels and checkpoints and HP and all that. Um, albeit in a different way than some of the older games or some of the previous Pitfall games. But I think, you know, you could... Hypothetically, let's say Sega or Namco or Capcom or whoever were to like revisit an old IP, you know, if they were to not do it the way it was originally designed in terms of gameplay, in simple terms, if they were to take a 2D game into 3D, they wouldn't put, do it at this scale, right? If they were doing a, let's say, I don't know, just off the top of my head, let's say Capcom are putting out a new Gunsmoke. You know, uh, I feel like they, they've got two ways of doing it, or three ways, let's say. You know, the most boring thing would be to basically port Gunsmoke, whatever. It's just putting out Gunsmoke again. It's part of a collection or whatever. And method two would be to like build a new Gunsmoke games game that captures the uh, not just the the tone and style, but also the mechanics. You do a 2D shooter that has like the multi-directional shooting, and it's like basically. Not comparing quality here, but it would be something like uh, Commando 3 or um, uh, 1942 Joint Strike, right? Uh, like some of those Capcom published sort of reboot sequels from, uh, you know, 10 years ago. But the third way would be to like do a proper full scale reboot, whatever, like to make it into like a third person shooter or whatever. Um, and I think that, if you were to go that route, which would be the equivalent of this, right? Uh, it wouldn't be done at this scale. It would be like a big budget thing. And it would be like, if it's big budget, it can't be like this, because this is a whatever, right? You understand what I mean, I hope. And this topic is something I thought about quite a bit in the context of Capcom specifically saying that in the wake of Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry 5 being like massive successes them saying hey we're probably going to look at bringing back more of our old IP and I think Devil May Cry 5 and Resident Evil 2 are tremendous games um, and I think those games are an appropriate way of uh, doing something with those specific IP I think if Capcom were to put up a new yeah, gun dot smoke or Section Z, or Pirate Ship Higimaru, or Strider, or, you know, whatever. Like, I don't think making a full-scale AAA game is necessarily what they should be doing with that. I think that's a big gamble that could, I don't know mean financially, I mean creatively. Um, you know, a 3D shooter, whatever, that's called Section Z could be cool. Maybe Section Z isn't the best example, because I don't know how, I don't know how mechanically unique or interesting that game is in, in specific, but the point I'm getting at is, like, if they want to bring back old, beloved games, and it is something that's old enough to not feel remotely modern in, like, a 3D sense, uh, I think it would make sense to make games, smaller scale games, that replicate not just the, you know, tone and atmosphere and maybe to some degree imagery and character designs and that kind of thing, but also how it actually plays. So I want things more like the Strider remake, question mark. Well, first of all, I wouldn't call it a remake. Uh, I think Strider 2014 was okay. Uh, I enjoyed it enough to finish it, but I didn't like it that much because Strider in particular is a game that's very near and dear to me and they didn't really include any of the things that I love the most about the game uh, I think that's uh, like that's also almost a game that's like out of time almost because that kind of scale of smaller reboot kind of thing is what you saw a lot of on like PS3 and 360 but you haven't really seen a lot since and it was, I mean, it came out on PS3. It was like a cross-gen game. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of things aren't going to fit necessarily super neatly uh, in, uh, 
into any of these sort of imaginary slots that I've just made up. Um, but I think... Um, I do think that the Strider 2014 was probably better. I probably liked that more than I would have liked a 3D Strider. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that 3D Strider could have been fucking awesome, but I think it could have also been really half-assed, or it could have been... More to the point, it could have been something that felt so far removed from what the original was. Uh, I mean, look at something like Final Fight Streetwise. Of course, that's a game that has a lot of problems in all kinds of ways. But ultimately, I think, you know, even if you set aside the tone and style and the writing and all that bullshit, the fucking cockroach stomping minigames, just the overall structure, like, there is actually a pretty decent combat system in that game. But it's packaged in so much other bullshit that, like, does not evoke Final Fight and doesn't feel like Final Fight. Uh, something like Golden Axe Beast Rider is another great example. Like, that game doesn't, for me, capture much of the appeal of the original. I think you could even say this doesn't really apply to just games either, because there's so many movies and shit where there's, like, you know, movies get made, like fucking uh, Lone Ranger or uh, Green Hornet or whatever, like because there's some sort of name recognition, there's some sort of idea that there's value to the brand, so let's make this thing happen. But then the game is like, or the movie, or whatever it is, is like <laughs> going to absurd lengths. Unspeakable horror awaits you. Uh, thank you very much for that subscription, Atomic Runner. Five decades in a row. Amazing. Now I lost my train of thought, but, uh, right. You know, things that only exist, only exist because of brand recognition, Yet, the game or movie or whatever it is, is like bending over backwards to distance itself from what it was originally. You know, I feel like any, you know, any movie or game or something like that will always have some sort of a cute, jokesy reference making fun of what the original thing is instead of like embracing it. Uh, and I feel like that's... You know, I, I'm not saying that Final Fight Streetwise necessarily does that exactly, but in practice, that's kind of what it ends up being. It's not really hitting any of the notes uh, that the original games did. To be fair, I think in 2005, uh, I, I think it's pretty clear why Capcom couldn't put out a 2D beat em up, like from a marketing sense. Uh, luckily, I think these days we have a such broader idea of like what you sort of can publish without it being weird. <laughs> uh, like we've reached the point where the idea of 2D is obsolete, 3D is the future. Like that is not really true anymore uh, in most people's eyes. I would hope. So I think. If you were to bring back an old IP, uh, I'm not saying you couldn't create a new 3D version that plays totally differently and, and still be successful. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. You could make a, a, a 3D action adventure Golden Axe that feels like Golden Axe enough to be, you know, just to not feel like an insult and still be a cool game. But I think, as far as like, I don't know. As far as appealing with what made the original games uh, memorable and well-liked in the first place, I think it's pretty weird to say that the way the games played had nothing to do with it. Uh, and if you're bringing back something that hasn't had a game in 20 years, like, unless it's something that has been, like, ripped off by other things or whatever so that it would feel sort of derivative like why not actually bring it back the way it's played as well as you know what it was aesthetically and, and tonally and whatever else I, I have no idea where I was going with this I don't know I it's just been uh, on my mind lately I guess <laughs> Yeah, Blood Rain, uh, I, I think I have that game. It's like Blood Rain, shit, it's got some sort of generic subtitle. Uh, I remember thinking it seemed like half decent, probably better than the actual Blood Rain games. Uh, 
but I don't know. Betrayal, right. That sounds good. Right. But yeah, I think it's uh, for sure, like, there's so many old IPs that a lot of studios sit on and do nothing with. And on one hand, like, it might be interesting to see what, like, a full-blown remake would be. And when I say full-blown remake, I don't necessarily mean, like, AAA budget, scale, scope. But just, like, something that takes that basic premise and does a new game with it. But at the same time, like, man, it's so easy to get that wrong. Or even if it turns out well, you might still have a, a you know, a wish to have seen what it could have been if it hadn't changed. The Streets of Rage 4, of course, you know, it's another game I, I've been thinking about a lot this year. It's a really good game, and I think uh, for all my potential minor nitpicks about certain things... In the grand scheme of things, I think they fucking nailed it. And I'm so glad that that's the sequel we finally got. Because there's been so many, like, aborted attempts at bringing back Streets of Rage by different developers. That I feel like none of them would have... From what we've seen of any of them, no, none of them got close to, like, even having the idea to so uh, accurately and faithfully and carefully replicating the feel of the original games. Um, and they would have been worse off for it, I think. And even if they would have been good, like, a good 3D beat-em-up is still probably not gonna, like, make a good 2D beat-em-up obsolete. You could, I mean, I would, I don't, I don't think anyone should, but you could hypothetically make a Streets of Rage 5 that's a 3D beat-em-up or, like, a spin-off or whatever and still make a Part 6 that goes back to 2D or whatever. They can coexist. Um, but I... I think my main point is just like that if you were to take something old and bring it back, you can uh, you can make something whole, totally new out of it, but I don't think that should be a uh, how do I put it? That should not be a basic like prerequisite for bringing it back in the first place. Like you could take something and just be ultra faithful and just do it exactly the way it was. Because if those old games are good, a new one like that would be good too. And just like apply some layer of modernity in terms of structure, in terms of ease of, you know, quality of life, that kind of thing. 3D Mario didn't make 2D Mario obsolete, so I hope that's not a controversial statement. Yeah, and that's an interesting example too, because there weren't a lot of 2D Mario games for a long ass time. Until they were, until there were. Uh, but for sure, different styles of those games can't coexist without making each other obsolete. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I've been streaming for a good 20-something minutes longer than I planned, because uh, something just uh, fired off a lot of these thoughts, and I had to rant about something. It wouldn't be a, um, a proper stream if I didn't rant about something unrelated to what I'm playing for a good 20-30 minutes, I guess. Um, anyway... I, I wish I had a, a nicer bow to tie around all of that. <laughs> uh, but it's an interesting topic for sure. Uh, I guess I, I'm i trying to just retrace my steps here. I guess we got into it speaking of how this fits into the grand timeline of revisiting old game IPs and shit. Yeah, 3D World is a different thing as well. I agree. Um... Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to see this, too, in the, in the context of, like, me just liking to explore older games and kind of tracking design trends and that kind of thing. And it's an interesting intersection in that this is, like, a very 2001 game, but it's also obviously picking up stuff from a 1983 game. So it's, like, not necessarily super modern, but at the same time, like, 2001, like, it's not like games were shifting all that fundamentally in what they were compared to what they had been on like PS1. There was mostly like refinement and stuff. Anyway, now I'm just fucking getting caught up keeping going with my long ass rants about nothing. Anyway, um, I'm having fun with this, but I actually need to wrap up pretty soon because I need to go to bed in not too long. Uh, Love Art, thank you very much for tuning in and hanging out and chatting. Thanks to everyone else as well, of course. Yeah, welcome to my TED Talk. This one's for free, but uh, who knows next time. <laughs> I'll be playing more of this for sure. Uh, maybe we'll play this during the weekend. 
Maybe I'll mess around with Tony Hawk or something. Uh, I'm not sure. It's Friday tomorrow, so uh, we'll uh, maybe play some games tomorrow. Maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. Who knows? Uh, also, super briefly, uh, as I mentioned previously, I do have a box of games from Japan coming, but it's, um, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks. But that's going to have a bunch of PS1 games and I think a few Saturn and Mega Drive games. As usual, I've already kind of forgotten what I ordered, but that should probably be a good time checking those things out when it, whenever it gets here. Um, also happening within a few weeks is my birthday. My birthday is on the 22nd of September. And for the past couple of years, I've always done something for my birthday. It's on a Tuesday, but uh, I've been meaning to look into maybe being able to take some time off work. Uh, to play video games for my birthday. I mean, that seems like a pretty good occasion, right? Uh, so either, probably, hopefully, I'll either be able to spend all of uh, that Tuesday playing games, or maybe if I'm taking, if I'm able to take the Wednesday off, maybe I'll just stream like all night instead or something. Uh, I do want to try to do some sort of extended stream for my birthday, at least, with some sort of theme going. I have no plans yet, but I'll think of something. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that shit happening in the near future. And as always, let me uh, do this too. Uh, best way to keep track of when shit is happening on stream is uh, joining my Discord and or following me on Twitter. That's where I'm most uh, active about trying to establish some sort of schedule whenever that happens. Let's, let's say it might as well. But that'll be it for tonight. Stick around. I'll see who else is streaming. I'll send you guys somewhere. Uh, but thank you very much for hanging out. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you guys soon.